Hey y'all, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, you guys, this is the mother of all declutters. So I have been doing my 2023 declutter series and I've been posting along the way my videos for like each category. So it was like, here's my eyeshadow palette declutter, my lip declutter, but I wanted to combine them, you know, as friends and family often do into one big monster long declutter for you so you can really revel in the declutter goodness. I got rid of hundreds of makeup products in this declutter. Spoiler alert, I got rid of so many more than I was expecting. You can't see them. Spoiler, they're right here. There's a lot of them and my friends are gonna have a good time going through them. I'm just gonna let you know right off the bat, all of these are, as I just said, going to friends and family. So I will not be giving them away to strangers on the internet and I hope you respect that. So I hope that if you are somebody who really likes long, long declutter videos that you will love this one. This video is over three hours long. So get yourself like several snacks, Maybe you're cleaning the house. Maybe you're doing some other tasks. Just this will keep you occupied for the next while, okay? So if you like this video, it would really mean a lot to me if you'd give it a thumbs up. Interact, comment down below. How many lipsticks do you think I'm gonna get rid of if you haven't already watched it? How many eyeshadow palettes? Are there any ones that you are convinced that I'm getting rid of? Comment down below, but let's jump right in. All right, we are going to get started. I am very excited to be doing this. My first declutter of the year, my first declutter in my new house, but this is going to be my declutter bin for now. It's just a little basket, and I have a feeling that as my declutters go along, I'm gonna need something way bigger than this. We are going to start with primer. These are the only primers I have, and to be honest, I am using all of these. I do want to, you know, show you my whole collection so you can see what I'm talking about, but even though these two are not technically primers, I do still consider them to be. So we have the Urban Decay All Nighter Ultra Glow Face Primer. This is actually almost empty. I really enjoy this, and I know it doesn't get a whole lot of love, but I feel like it does give my skin that glow. The Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I only recently got this and I really love this on days when I want my makeup to last all day. This is fantastic for that. The Smashbox Photo Finish. This is another one I only recently just got and I had used this many years ago but I just received it again in PR. And this is one where I use for on days I want my skin to look pretty damn perfect. It's you know, glossy and beautiful, and I just, I really enjoy this. This is the only one I even vaguely considered getting rid of, and you know what? Mm. So I don't normally pay attention to expiration dates, I'll be honest, but I will be honest that I've had this one for years at this point, like years and years and years, and it does have a 12-month shelf life. I'm gonna go ahead and get let this one go, which is difficult for me, oddly, because I do enjoy it, but this one can go. These two are absolutely staying. We have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. As you can see, like, it's so strange. My entire, like, you can see it coming off on my finger there. My entire label, like, peeled off eventually. But it is still good. I know I probably should get rid of it because it's older, but I'm not. And then the Auric Glow Lust. I absolutely adore this. I really want to make an effort to use this more. I feel like I always say that. This is such, like, a luxury product to me and I just love it so much. So these five are staying and this one can go. Let's jump into foundation. So in the grand scheme of things, I feel like this is not a lot of foundation considering what most YouTubers have, but I am very, very, very picky about my foundation, extremely picky. So if I don't like something, I usually don't even bother keeping it in my collection, especially because, you know, it could just depend on your skin type or your skin tone. And I am awful at shade matching myself. So let's go through this left to right. I'm going to start with this Tower 28 Sunny Days. Absolutely keeping this and actually going to be repurchasing this. I'm really hoping they have a Black Friday sale because I do want to get this soon. It's basically empty. This is my favorite tinted moisturizer as of right now, just purely tinted moisturizer. For days where I don't want to wear a whole lot of makeup, this is 
perfect for me and my shade is Mulholland. I really love this. This, I can tell you, can go. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer in Fair 4N. The color is just wrong for me and to be honest, I used to love and be obsessed with this but it doesn't work for my skin anymore. As I've gotten older, I feel like it's not as hydrating as I would like it to be, and I do have dry skin, as you'll see from here. These are glowy foundations, these are sheer foundations, but all very hydrating. This one is just not working for me. It's almost full. I'm hoping I can pass this to a friend. Then next, this one is actually almost empty as well. This is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation. My shade is 31NN. I really enjoy this. I think it is, you know, it says weightless. I do agree that it is fairly weightless, but it does have a medium coverage for me. It can be built up. This is very close to being empty, so I'm gonna work really hard. My goal, I wanna have this empty by the end of the year. So I'm gonna keep this in my collection, but I think it's gonna be empty very soon. Huh, this is one I've gone back and forth on several times. This is the Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. I have kind of a love-hate with this because when it works, it really works. It looks beautiful. The coverage is stunning and it just, it just looks perfect on the face. But when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And it just looks cakey or it looks drying on the skin. And that could depend on the day that I'm having too. But when it works, it really works. But this is one, I don't have an easy time with this foundation. I will say that. This one is a little difficult for me. This is 7N. I'm gonna be keeping this, but I don't love it. So I feel bad keeping it in a way, but when it works, it works. Next is the Anastasia Luminous Foundation. This is another one where I don't completely love it, but I don't completely hate it. I almost put it in the same category as the Stay Naked, except this one's a little more full. This one is a little more yellow based. The shade is 210N. I do enjoy this from time to time. So I don't think I'm gonna get rid of it. It does serve its purpose, but it's not the first foundation I want to pick up. Like when I look at all my foundations and I'm like, what is my favorite? This is not my favorite, but I am still going to keep this. I have talked so much about the Urban Decay Stay Naked Hydromaniac Tinted Glow Hydrator. This is one of my favorite foundations and I do use two shades. I use 30 and 40 to get my perfect shade. These are both very close to being empty. These will be empty before the year is out as well. And I just love these. I think they do a great job of hydrating the skin. And they're somewhere in between a very light tinted moisturizer like the Tower 28 Sunday, Sunny Days and a foundation. So I enjoy that. They do provide a little more coverage for me and the finish is always beautiful. So this is something I will repurchase when I'm finished. I have a backup of one of the shades, I think it's 30, but the other one I do not, and these two together create my perfect mix, so those are staying. The Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation, this one is actually close to empty as well. I haven't bought a new foundation in so long. These are definitely older, and I think these all have like, well, this says 12 months. I thought it was six months shelf life, but nonetheless, I do enjoy this foundation. This is a little, probably my heaviest coverage foundation here, and this even still is only like a medium coverage, but I do feel like it gives the skin a luminous glow. I do feel like it hydrates well and looks pretty on the skin, so this is staying. I'm gonna let this go. This is old as shit. This says 24 months. I've probably had this at least 48 months. This is the Becca Light Shifter Doing Tint Illuminator. I loved this. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. The shade was a little too deep for me. It was Orbit 2, but nonetheless, it was so glowy, so impossibly, incredibly glowy, and it was just a tinted moisturizer. So it kept your skin glowy, it evened it out, and it wasn't too heavy, but it's time to let her go. And then finally, I should let these go, but I absolutely will not be. This is the Natasha Denona Face Glow Foundation, my favorite foundation of all time. This is the perfect mix of a glowy medium coverage foundation and a tinted moisturizer for me. It's extremely hydrating and my skin never looks better than when I'm wearing these. The problem is like I would only have these in my collection if it wasn't discontinued. And I'm so sad it's discontinued. I'm so sad I haven't found anything that comes close to this. So I'm gonna be using these until the bitter end, until there's nary a drop left. I really love these. So for now, I'm just getting rid of two.
I wasn't planning on it, but let's talk sunscreen for a minute. Now, I think it's obvious what my favorite brand of sunscreen is, okay? I love Supergoop so much. It is my absolute perfect sunscreen. I think it blends into the face. And to be honest, this one right here, the Everyday Play is my absolute favorite. Number one, I just finished my big container of this. So I just have this little guy. This is going nowhere. This is definitely gonna be a repurchase. It also came with these three in that same pack. So we have the Unseen Sunscreen, which I feel like feels like the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. It's silicone-y in a way. And for example, my husband loves the way this one feels. It doesn't clog his pores and it's really fantastic for that. I prefer the Play over the Unseen, but I know most people I feel prefer this. The Glow Screen, I do enjoy. It does have a little bit of a tint to it. I wear that on days when I'm doing the bare minimum, <laughs> the most bare minimum. And this Defense Refresh Setting Spray or Resetting Mist, I haven't even really used this yet. So let me know what you think of this. This is SPF 40, so I feel like I should have used this during the summer, to be honest, on days when I wanted a little bit of a refresh in the middle of the day. This is something I might take with me. I am going away on a trip to somewhere a bit more warm and sunny in January, so this might be good to take with me. As far as these two, these are ones that I'm still testing. So this is the Versed Daily, Daily Mineral Sunscreen, and it has a very light tint to it. It doesn't say that it's tinted, which is interesting. But let me show you, it, there is a definite tint to this. Like, I don't know how they can not advertise that, but you can see it looks like a foundation. Now it does blend right away into my face. I don't see any kind of a cast, but I would have to imagine that if you were of deeper skin tone that this would show up maybe strange on you. I don't know. I'd, I'd love to hear your opinions, but so far I do enjoy this sunscreen under foundations. It has been very nice. Still doesn't beat this guy, but I am testing it. And same thing with this one. I got this one as kind of a freebie. This is the Pipette Mineral Sunscreen SPF 50. I do like that it's SPF 50. That is my preferred SPF. But this one I'm a little bit on the fence about and I'm not sure exactly why. It just, I feel like it doesn't sit as well on the skin. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and give this one away. As I'm sitting here, I'm talking about things that I don't like about it. So why would I keep it? So that one is going away. So I was about to bring in my container that we could fill and I saw one other thing in there. The Danessa Myricks Beauty Oil, Hydrating Face Oil. I'm just gonna give this away. <laughs> I have never used it at all. So yeah. All right, let's go into setting spray. I do have six setting sprays and some of these can definitely go. So these two are vaguely the same. So these are both the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray. One of them is Ultra Glow and the other one is not. I use both of these religiously. This is what I use when I'm looking for more of an all day set. Oh, background shifted. <laughs> this is what I use when I'm looking for more of an all day set just to really like lock in my makeup. And this is what I use when I just want my makeup to glow but stay put as well. I use both of these interchangeably. I don't know why I decide to use one over the other sometimes, but I really love them both. This is what I use to literally just refresh my face. I don't use this as a setting spray. I think that this puts out a little bit too much hydration for a setting spray. I know that sounds weird, but I feel like it's fantastic for skincare, but I don't really love it for setting my makeup all day, but I love it otherwise. This, this, I wanna, I wanna burn this product, okay? This is one of the worst products I've tried. I was gonna say this year, maybe in the last two to three years, okay? So this is the Lottie London Stay Mad AF Setting Spray, and you do have to shake before use and everything like that. So here's what happened. I shook this before use. Maybe I didn't shake hard enough, but I shook it pretty vigorously, right? And I sprayed it on my face once my makeup was all completed and it left white powder covering my face. It had white powder shot like all over my shirt, all over my hair. 
it was the absolute worst. And I'm guessing it's because of the, you know, they want it to be super matte, right? But at the same time, I did what I was supposed to do and this product betrayed me. Goodbye. <laughs> I think I'm gonna let this one go as well. This is the Koki Refresh Hydrating Setting Spray. The only reason I'm letting it go is because it's it's empty. I think there's like one spritz left in there and I've had this for a while. I did really enjoy this. I think this is a really good kind of budget-friendly setting spray. I just, I thought this one was really good. It surprised me and I probably will repurchase this eventually, but this one's pretty empty so it can go. And this one we have about half left. This is the NYX Bear With Me Prime Set Refresh. I really like this, but again, similar to the hangover, um, Too Faced hangover spray, this is more for hydration for me and for really maybe upping up the glow factor as opposed to setting my makeup all day. So when you look at my collection here, these two are for when I need my makeup to last. These two are for when I just want my skin to feel great and maybe get an extra glow. So I do think all of these have their place, but the other two can go. They just, just fine, just roll away. Okay, bronzer and contour. Let's chat about these. I, ew, what is that? Okay, bronzer and contour. I have not a huge collection, okay? I've seen some bronzer and contour declutters recently where it is like 50 products. This is all I have in that section, but even still, I see some that I can get rid of. So let's start by talking about what I'm gonna keep. I think you all know this is like my number one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Cream Bronzer. I love this. I don't know if you can tell how much of a dip there is in that, but this is something I'm 100% going to pan and then repurchase. I think this blends beautifully on the skin. I think it has a great amount of hydration. I think it even has a little bit of a glow, but not so much where it's, I don't know, distracting or that it slides around a whole lot. I love this. I have had friends who said that this did not blend so well for them. It blends like a dream for me. This is my number one favorite product for bronzing or even a little bit of contouring. I think I can let this one go though. This one is decent, but this is the Iconic London Bronzer um, and the shade is light bronze. Oh wait, do I wanna let this go? Oh, you know what, no, I can let it go. It's really nice, it's a really good product, but I have other things I'm looking at down here that I like better. Right, oh, you know what? Yeah, you know what, this one can go. It's beautiful, it's a great product. I hope somebody loves it, but this one, oh, right? Ugh. This one's gonna go. This Sigma bronzer, I absolutely love. This is a more matte bronzer and the shade is light. I love the color of this. I love the undertone. I think it does a great job of bronzing without being too heavy. And even though it looks quite warm, it's not orangey, which I really appreciate. I just really like the formula of this. This is gonna stay. This one I should get rid of, but I'm not. The reason I should get rid of is because like this packaging has been broken for so long and it's just like, I don't know. This is the Kosas Sun Show Bronzer. I love this for the glow. Like you can see the sheen on it and it looks like hard pan, it is not. I love this bronzer. I feel like I should almost buy another one though, just so it's like stayed sealed. But I just, I really love this one. This shade is light. I feel like we're seeing a theme here. I enjoy this, I'm gonna keep. Now this is more of a contour. This is a contour and highlight set. This is the Film Star Mini Duo by Charlotte Tilbury. And similar to the Sigma bronzer, I love that this one is warm, but it doesn't pull off orange. This highlight is also beautiful, but if I'm being honest, I don't use this highlight as much as I use the bronzer. I do enjoy this more for contour though. Uh, when I'm going for a very light contour, I feel like it's a great shade and I just, I really enjoy this one and it feels, I don't know, it feels very luxe. I really like it. Here is more of kind of like, I, okay, I guess you'd call this a liquid bronzer in a way. This is the Drunk Elephant Debronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Drops. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this little one, but I'm absolutely going to keep the big one. I love mixing this into my foundation when it's a little bit too light, which I am notorious for picking foundations that are too light. So I'm very excited to keep this and use this more. I really need to make an effort to use it more. I'm gonna keep this where I keep my foundation so I know to use it more. Here is one that I'm unfortunately going to get rid of. 
This is the Ofra and Samantha March Bronzer in River. I love this, but maybe something in my skin has changed. This does pull very, very, very orangey on me now. And it didn't always, it always pulled like this beautiful color, but now it pulls straight orange. I love this so much. I love the shimmery and matte side, but the color is just not right for me anymore. This is the Nabla Bronzer in Ambra. And oh, this is another one I'm gonna let go. Wow, look at me getting rid of a whole bunch, I think. This is another one. No, you know what? I can't. Look at that sheen. I'm gonna give this another shot. I wanna give this another shot in one of my use it or lose it videos coming up because I loved the sheen on this and I love how it has just slightly cool and warm tones mixed. I wanna, I wanna give this one another shot, okay? This is almost gone. This is my Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand and I love this for contour. It is a great shade. When you remember to blend it out, I had a recent video where I put a huge stripe under my chin and forgot to blend it out. So that was cute, but I just, I love the way this blends out. I love the way that this makes contouring very easy. It does have the puff ball at the top, which is not always my favorite, but it works. It does the job. I love it. And finally, another one that I should get rid of, but I won't. My OG Anastasia contour kit. You can tell I've used this shade till it's almost gone and this shade is about to hit pan as well. This shade, I don't think I've used once and I don't use these. I'm keeping it specifically for these two. It is a fantastic powder contour. I love this and I'm going to keep it. So here are my powders, my pressed powders and then two loose powders. I'm going to get rid of only one of these and I'll start by getting it out of the way. That's the Lottie London Ready Set Go. I really do, mm, you know what, crap. <laughs> I like both, you know what, I'm not getting rid of any of them. I'm not getting rid of any of them. These are my favorite powders and I use all of these. I don't use loose powder as often as pressed powder, but when I do need them, these two are both fantastic and I like that they're kind of more budget friendly. This is my favorite, the Kosas um, Cloud Set Powder. This is breezy. I adore this. You can tell it's almost empty. And also the second Kosas product of mine where the packaging has broken. So that's kind of annoying, okay? The ColourPop Pretty Fresh. I think that this is a highly underrated pressed powder. The quality is so good. It's really good, like comparable to my Kosas and even my Charlotte Tilbury. I really, really like this. And again, I like that it's an affordable option. I like the slim packaging. I just like everything about it. And then finally, my Charlotte Tilbury powder, which you can tell is my absolute favorite. This shade is slightly too deep for me at times. Right now it's still okay, but come winter, it's going to be too deep for me. And this is medium, I believe. Yeah, number two, medium. I'm gonna, I'm keeping all of these. All right, this one's kind of all over the place, but this is going to be the last bit of my stuff. So I see a few things that shouldn't be in here right off the bat. This is a sample of a face primer. This is the Yenza Essential Glow. It's got like one or two uses left in it, but I'm immediately gonna get rid of this. I just, if I didn't know what was even in there, I'm not using it, so that can go. And this, this one I have to admit is a little difficult for me. So as you know, Mac is not a cruelty-free company and I only use cruelty-free products. I had a friend that gifted me only about six months ago, just a bag of like stuff that she didn't want. And this was in there and I immediately went to, to put it aside since it wasn't cruelty free. You guys, if I'm being honest, this is my favorite Mac product. This and the um, Fix Plus were my favorite Mac products of all time. So I kept this one for a little bit thinking I would use it. And then each time I went to pick it up, how stupid is this? I actually felt guilty. So I've never used it. It does have, it was used by her, but it was never used by me. This one's gonna go. But let's stick with primer. So I do have four eye primers over here. This, my Urban Decay Primer Potion, this is an oldie, but a goodie. This one I'm definitely gonna keep. This has been kind of like one of my go-tos over the last decade or so. And I really enjoy it. It's not the best thing I've ever used, but it is, 
it, it works. It does the job and it works. So this is gonna stay and this is my current favorite. This is the Sigma eyeshadow base primer. The color I have is Persuade. It does have a very light kind of pinky tint to it, but this blends on the eye really easily and it makes your colors really stick to them and pop and I love this. This makes my shadow last all day. I just, I'm obsessed, frankly, I love it. This one, so this is the Kaleidos Tone Activator Primer. I think a lot of people love this. I didn't love this. It's very watery to me, and no matter how much I would like squish it around or whatever, it just, it just didn't work for me. I don't love this, so this is gonna go. And the NYX Glitter Glue will forever be my glitter adhesive of choice as of right now. I don't know why I said forever. You never know what's gonna come along. But I really love using this with any shimmers and it really hangs on, so this is gonna stay. Now, as far as concealers, I'm torn, okay? I'm really torn here because the only one out of all of these that I love is this one. This is the Sigma Color Correcting Duo. Is it Spectrum Color Correcting Duo in light medium? This shade right here is my perfect concealer shade, okay? It's got a little bit of warmth to it and it's very, 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 very creamy. It is so wonderfully creamy that I just adore it. And even this shade, I love this for brightening because it's brightening, but it's not too bright. And I have a tendency, again, to purchase concealers that are too light for me. This is perfect. I know it's dirty, I'm sorry, but this is my perfect one. I'm not getting rid of that. The Glossier Stretch Concealer, I think I can get rid of this only because it's the wrong color for me, okay? It's not a bad product. In fact, it's beautiful. It's very creamy, it's very hydrating, it's very lightweight, but however, it is too light for me. So I'm gonna let this one go, surprisingly. Now these four, I like them for the purposes. So Urban Decay did send me two of their Naked Quickie concealers, and it was intended to be one for, um, one for concealing, 40NN, and 60NN was supposed to be for contour. I'm gonna let 60NN go, because for this one, the shade is just a little too deep for me. It's a little too orangey and it doesn't work as a contour for me. So I love the quality, which is why I'm gonna keep this one, even though this one is a little too light for me. But it is nice for brightening and I just, I really enjoy how luminous this is and how comfy. Now this one does have a little brush on the end. I've never used it, I never will. If I'm being honest, I don't like a dense fat brush for under my eyes. I like something a little more gentle, but this is gonna stay. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep these two. It's so interesting because they're such different shades. This one is so much more cool toned than this. Now the shades are Ivory and Fair. And these two mixed are a very good under eye shade for me. It's not my favorite formula though. As of all of these, this is the only one I love, the Sigma one. Others are just kind of there. So I feel like that's telling me something. Now I'm not gonna get rid of these three. I'm gonna keep these three as well, but when Sigma has sales, I really should just stock up on this because it's the most perfect under eye concealer for me ever. And that's it. <laughs> All right, let's tackle blush. Similar to my other declutter videos, I'm gonna be using this lovely little bowl basket thing to put all my declutters in. And I don't know why, but I have everything sort of arranged by brand. And I don't do that for any other product really. So I'm not sure why I did it for this, but let's get into it. All right, I decided to get maybe the obvious out of the way first. These are all of my Melt Cream Blush Lights. These are all the ones that came out in the very first release that they did. I believe they have since released one or two other colors. I have not purchased those yet. This is just that first release. And spoiler, I'm not getting rid of any of these. I absolutely love this. This is my favorite formula of cream blush right now. And just in general, I love this formula. It is very smooth, it is very creamy, and it blends really well. And for me, it lasts all day. You can tell my obvious two favorites. This one is Golden Hour. It looks really gross, but I swear it's beautiful. It's peachy with a shimmer. And then this one, which I think is one of the most underrated cream blushes of all time, 
is Lynx. And this one is just a beautiful, like shimmery bronze gold. When these two run out, I will immediately repurchase these two. Would I repurchase the others? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, like, but it is reminding me, like, this one right here is called Daydreamer, and I never use it. And look how beautiful that is. And it's got this, like, beautiful sheen to it. This is going to be a great color for winter, I feel like. So I need to use these. But yes, all of these are staying in my collection. They're all going. So these are more melt products that I have. We do have two powder blushes, and then these three are blush duos. So they are more shimmery. They are considered to be the digital dust duo. So these aren't quite highlighters for me because of the tone. You know, some of them, I guess, you know, it's a little bit light, but I use these as blushes, like shimmery blushes and blush toppers. Again, spoiler, these are all staying, but I do have only two shades of powder blush by them right now. And these are Honey Thief and Cali Dream. So Honey Thief is just your average pinky peach color, whereas Cali Dream definitely has a significant peach orangey undertone. I do like the quality of these. I'll be honest that I use cream blushes or shimmer blushes way more than I use matte blushes, but these are fantastic for those days. I really want my blush to last for all day. And also sometimes I'll use these and then use something shimmery on top of them to really give them the glow that I like. So these are gonna stay. And then all three of these, I love these and I feel like these never got the love they deserved from just general population. These are so beautiful. First of all, the imprint of that honeycomb is just to die for. This one is Buzzkill, correct? Yes, this is Buzzkill. So you've got this like peachy color here with a shimmery kind of champagne-y color here. They're just really pretty really just glowing. They're glowing, but they're not glittery. So I feel like these are so beautiful. This one is, is Queen Bee. Yeah, Queen Bee, I feel like is the most underrated one specifically. I use this for eyeshadow all the time. So I don't often use this one for blush. I use it for eyeshadow, but I still keep them all together. But they're just so, so lovely. So all of these are staying as well. I wanted to leave that whole struggle in of me opening these boxes because I'm trying really hard to get better about just getting rid of boxes, but I, I don't know why. It's like a weird thing of mine that I enjoy keeping them in their boxes, but those are so difficult to open that they're just breaking nails. What's the point? So my Sigma cream and powder blushes are all so beautiful. This is another really, really stellar quality. This is the one I use the most. This is Pashmina. And this is just a beautiful pinky peach and I love it. And as far as these, this one is a powder blush, but as you can see, this is Tiger Lily. There's a definite beautiful, beautiful shimmer here. I just noticed though that I've never once used this color and this color is nearly wild. This is a little deep for me that I probably would not really use it. So I'm gonna let this one go. I really thought I'd be keeping all of my Sigma blushes but this one can go. Um, I think I'm keeping the rest though. I am. I'm keeping the rest because these are all beautiful and you know what? They make me happy. Do I get rid of the boxes? Oh God, I'm going to get rid of the boxes. <laughs> you know what? I lied. I can't get rid of the boxes because look, all the packaging looks exactly the same. Whereas this packaging actually has the name of it on there. I'm sorry. I can't do it.
So these are my Kaleidos blushes. And I think I can already see a few I will get rid of. This is, this makes me sad because they're so beautiful. The packaging is stunning. And it's just like, this is one of those things that makes me want to keep it just to keep it, just to look at the pretty packaging. But to be honest, like I want to use my makeup and keeping all of it would defeat the purpose of using my makeup. So I can see this one I'm definitely going to let go. This is beautiful. And this shade, oh wow, maybe I shouldn't have taken them all out of their packaging. The shades are not printed on the packaging. Love that. But this is a beautiful, cool toned pink. This just is not the kind of color I gravitate towards. So this one is definitely going to go. And I think that I'm going to let these two go as well. These are very, very light tones that came out with, I think, the recent Alma Viva collection. Really beautiful, just a bit too light for me. This one is Angel Wing and this is Pale Rose. So those two are gonna go. I'm really debating on these two here. So I have never used this, but I have heard everyone rave about this specific color because of its beautiful red tones and saying that it's like underestimated how beautiful it is. So I think I'm gonna keep that. And same thing with this, like I haven't used this at all yet, but couldn't that be really pretty for some look? I don't know. And I love brown blushes. So I definitely kind of gravitate towards them. And this pink is kind of neutral for me. I'm gonna keep these one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna get rid of these three. How do I figure out what is what though? Damn it. So these are my six Finding Ferdinand and Khaki blushes. Okay, these came out with the Summer Abroad collection. I will let you know I'm keeping all of these. These are an interesting formula though, because I feel like they're somewhere in between a cream and a mousse in that they just, I don't know, they have a very unique texture. They're very blendable. They just stay on the skin very well. They have a beautiful sheen to them. I just love, all of these and i was very surprised that i liked all six colors especially things like this like that is red and that is a deep brown but like they all somehow worked on me obviously maybe i used a lighter hand on things like this color and maybe a you know a stronger hand on colors like this and to be honest my biggest dips are in the two lightest shades so this is paloma correct uh yes paloma and latte yep yeah, paloma and latte and i just i love them so much and the way that these were made were in various shades of like pinky peaches and browns and then it was going from lightest to deepest lightest to deepest which i think is really cool and it's really like a deep dive into color theory so i've seen these look beautiful on all skin tones i am very curious to try out more finding ferdinand products if you've tried them please let me know down in the comments below what are your favorites but i'm keeping all These are by Kaja and these are their cheek and lip stains. I think they're called Jelly Much and they've got these cute little charms on them with like little puffy and the, you know, the glitter can fall down. I think it's so, so cute. And I will also say, guess what? I'm keeping all four of these. This came in a big set and I got rid of most of them and I just kept these four. And for example, this morning when I was thinking about how I was gonna do my declutter today, I was like, which out of these would I be most likely to declutter? And I picked up this one, okay? Which, uh, you know, the shades aren't even on here, unfortunately, but I picked up this one because it's like a berry shade. And I'm always more like, you know, going for neutrals and things like that. And I wore this today and I love it. I love the way it catches the light. I just think it's really beautiful. So guess what? All four are staying. So these are my Kaja Cheeky Stamps. We have Saucy and Bossy, and these are so adorable because you take off this and you've got a little heart stamp, right? And what you do is you take that heart stamp and you pounce it 
into the actual product, which is here in a sort of sponge format. It's almost like a moussey sponge and it's just got very like, I don't want to say light coverage, but it blends out very easily. It's very buildable. Damn it, I was going to get rid of both of these and now I'm questioning myself. Here's the thing, I don't use them. I haven't been using them and I love them, but I think it's just the fact that like it's one more step, right? But I don't know why it's one more step because you're still undoing this and I would use a brush to apply it, which is the same thing as the Finding Ferdinand. So I don't know why I'm having trouble with this one. Let me look at this color again. See, but that's so pretty. You know what? I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to keep bossy and I'm going to let saucy go. I'm going to put it in here before I even have time to really think about it, but I'm just going to keep one. I think that's, that's pretty fair and I will make more of an effort to use these. These are my two Natasha Denona cheek palettes. Again, I am keeping both. So we do have the Bloom Blush and Glow palette. I just really love these. Now, do I use this color? I don't at all. Um, I use, oh, there's a big old hair in there. Ignore me, don't judge me, don't judge me. But this is a nice cream. It's like, they call it a, a glow topper, I think. Yeah, it's the glow. So what I like to use this for, I will put this on first as a glow base, and then I will top it with either this shimmery blush or this highlighter. This is the Glow Extreme. This is the Duo Glow. I think these are absolutely beautiful. I love it. And the other one is the Love Glow Cheek Palette. So in the same way, we have the Glow Cream Base, and I use this and this. I'll be honest, I don't really use these too much, but I use this so much. I don't know if you can tell how much of a dip there is that it's worth keeping the whole palette. And also like, oh my goodness, look how pretty that is. You guys, I'll be honest, I've only gotten rid of five things so far. I'm a little bummed about that. I'm hoping maybe to force myself to get rid of some stuff, but I don't have to, you know? I did find one more Natasha Denona product, and that is this single duo glow brush or blush. You guys, does that look like it's growing things? I can't tell. Crap, I don't know. I don't know. Let me see. Is that something that goes? Oh, yeah, wait, that kind of goes away as soon as I touch it. So you can see this. Do you see how shimmery and stunning that is? Like, I'm trying not to do complete swatches, and this is more cool tone. But look at that glow. That incredible, stunning glow is why I can't get rid of this. This is so beautiful. And this color is Rayo, I believe, R-A-Y-O. I love it. So these are the only two like proper blush palettes that I have. I know I have those Natasha Denona, but since I mainly use the cream in those, I don't know that I call them blush palettes really, but these two are proper blush palettes. So guess what? I'm keeping both of them. <laughs> this is the Sigma Beauty and the Beast. I only recently got this and the detail on the packaging is so beautiful and I've used all three of these. This shade is a touch too uh, I don't know what the phrase is. Vibrant for me? I was going to say deep, but that's not the that's not the correct word. Vibrant for me. Um, even with a very light hand, but I still enjoy it, and I love Beauty Within, and I love, you can see, I've already made a dent in this beautiful highlighter. Now, this palette from Melt came out with their, um, what is it, the Amore Turn? No, no, not Amore Turn. Uh, Amore Mariposas um, collection, and it's just look at it it's just so stunning the color shades are all very different now have i ever used this no will i ever use this probably not same thing with this i don't use those but these three i use enough to make up for the entire palette and also this is something that i will keep kind of as a collector piece i think it's so beautiful and i know so much love was put into this collection that i can't resist keeping it so this is staying So this is the rest of my blush collection. These are just the individuals. 
I can already see a few that I'm going to let go. So this is brand new, never used. I don't even want to take the top off. The shade is Quickie and it is by Milk Makeup. And these are their blush sticks that leave a tint. I can already tell though that this color, this kind of deep burgundy is not going to be my vibe. So I don't even want to use this to test it out because I know some will get some love out of this, but I am going to keep this shade, which is Work, W-E-R-K. This is like a light peachy pink that I know I will get a good amount of use out of. So that is going to be staying. As far as these three at the top, these are all staying. I've talked about this before. This is the one full-size MAC product left in my collection. I stopped using MAC or stopped purchasing MAC, excuse me, uh, when I went on my cruelty-free journey, I believe that was in 2018 now. Wow, it's been a long time that I've only been using cruelty-free, but this product was always like my holy grail, my number one favorite, my good time boy, my rotten stinky cheese, and it's staying forever. I still think this is one of the more beautiful products they've ever come out with. This is Stereo Rose Mineralized Skin Finish. Look at the veining. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. So this is definitely something that is going to stay in my collection. This one I'm torn about because I've used it and I enjoy it. You know what? No, I've used it and every time I use it, I enjoy it. So this is the Nabla Skin Glazing in Truth. This is a shimmery peach blush that borders on highlighter, to be honest, but it's very, very beautiful, very shimmery. And to be honest, it's very similar to this one, which is Milani Luminoso, which is one that I can't get rid of for sentimental reasons too. Look at the glow on it. Do you see the shimmery glow? This gives your skin such a beautiful shine. This is staying forever. This can definitely go. So this is a ColourPop Cream Blush, a Super Shock Cheek Matte in Doozy. I just don't like matte cream blushes. I feel like they don't look good on my skin. I feel like they age me. Um, yeah, this is one that, that can definitely go and get some use from somebody else. The color is very pretty. It's just the formula I don't love. This is by Merit. So this is one of their cream blush sticks as well. And this shade is terracotta. And I love a brown neutral blush. This is absolutely saying the formula on these are really beautiful in that they are very creamy but at the same time, they don't move your foundation around or anything. I really do like this. You know what, here's another one that can go. This is the only other ColourPop blush I have, but it's similar in color to one of the Melt Powder blushes that I have, and I like that formula more. So this shade is called To The 10, and it really is pretty. Uh, you can see I've used it many times, but I just think it can go to a better home. This is staying. I don't even know if this is still around, but these were the blush lighters by Essence where they were essentially a blush and a highlight. As you can see on this side, you've got this shimmery, beautiful highlight and not glittery, just shimmery. And then over here is a matte blush, but when you mix them all together, it's just magic. It's actual magic and it was so affordable and I love this color. This is staying. You know what, this can go. I had talked about this in the full video about this Vampire Diaries collection, and I wasn't impressed with this enough to keep it. This is a lip and cheek stain. I just didn't love it. It was okay. It was okay. I've tried it like two or three times since, but it can go. And these are all staying. These are various forms of like liquidy type blushes. So we do have the Urban Decay Hydromaniac. I really, really like this formula a lot. I think it builds up easily. This shade is dripping and it is, looks like hot pink. It looks very intimidating, but it builds up nice and easy. I really like it. Then I also am just getting used to trying this. This is the Smashbox Halo Sheer to Stay Color Cheek Tint in Wisteria. I'm sorry, Color Tint in Wisteria. This is similar to this, but it's a slight touch creamier. This is more liquidy. So this, I feel like you need to work with this a little bit quicker, but it still blends like a dream. The Glossier Cloud Paints, I have Beam and Dusk. I love these. It's probably time for them to go, if I'm being honest. Like I could probably use to get a new one. Six months. Oh my God, I've had these like years. I've had these for years because the littlest bit goes a long, long, long way. So no, those are staying. <laughs> and then we've got the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand. And the shade I have is Pinkgasm. This is just stunning. Again, we've got another one of those poof balls at the top. And it's just, it's just lovely. It's glowy and glimmery and I love it.
All right, we are gonna get started on the highlight declutter. I'm so excited and as always, I'm going to be using this little bowl bin thing to put my declutters in. Let's get moving. So these are my Kaleido Space Age highlighters. I do have the set of eight. And what's so funny about a highlighter declutter is I feel like they all can look the same. I mean, I think it's obvious to tell like this one is way more pinky and things like that. But for the most part, I mean, they look like, it looks like a bunch of white face makeup, but these are all drastically different. And I'm not gonna lie, this is one where I am keeping all of these specifically because I like the collection. I absolutely love the packaging on these, how it's like raised and these are little tins. I just think these are so cool and so classy, but let me show you some of my favorites because I did go ahead and I got my makeup eraser so I can do just at least some swatches. This shade right here, so this is Skywalker and this is a sort of like bluish, uh, bluish purple toned highlighter. It's so, so, so beautiful. And you can see the color there. You can see how strong, whoops, how strongly like blue it is. Come on, focus. <laughs> You can just see the shiftiness, right? And it's just so pretty in how it catches the light. Sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's purple. I absolutely love it. And then of course, I mean, I think this is one that they're more known for. Gifted is such a shifty, like green to purple to just everything color. Look at that shiftiness, like the pink tones that come in there and it's just, gorgeous like oh my god i'm trying to capture the green because i just like i just had that like vibrant green shift i could see but it's so so pretty i love the different colors in this one again this one is gifted i'm keeping all of these So these are the low light highlighters from Unearthly Cosmetics. Now, this is like a playing a game of Russian roulette right now because one of these is broken and I can't remember which one. I am pretty sure, is it this one? I think maybe, oh gosh, I think it's Spectre. I think it's Spectre, so let's open this first. I'm gonna tap it gently to see, oh gosh, I'm gonna be so gentle. Yep, okay, winner, chicken dinner. Here's the thing, this is so stunning. It is so beautiful. I need to repress this. And to be honest, I've never repressed anything. So I almost wanna use this one as an experiment because it is so beautiful. These highlighter formulas are so good. And this one has such a pretty pink shift to it that I wanna save this specifically to practice on. I know that sounds bad. Of course, I would like to wear it if it works, but I wanna to try to repress that. But let's look over the others. Oh my gosh. Guys, am I gonna get rid of nothing in this declutter? Hey, there's, there's a small chance of that, but I warned you, I warned you. So this shade right here is Twilight. And this, let's, let's do swatches. These are so creamy. You know what, actually? Hmm, okay, this is the one I didn't like. So it's a little hard to tell, but this one, as shifty and beautiful as it is, this one was a little glittery for me. So um, as opposed to more of like a smooth pigmented highlighter, so I think I can actually let this one go, surprisingly. It's pretty, it's just not a formula that I prefer. And I'll double check on the other formulas, but I think that's the only one. So spellbonding, yes, this is another smooth. Oh my gosh, look at the pink shift. See, this is gonna make me fall in love with my makeup collection all over again, which I feel like is the point of some of these. Look at that shift. Look, it is pink to green to gold to, Oh my, I can't stop staring at this. And what's the, which shade is this again? Spellbinding? Why have I not used this one every single day of my life? Um, okay, yeah, yeah, you can't have that. 
that one's mine. And then Mirage is the last one. Now Mirage is definitely that, again, that quite pigmented. These almost look like you're pouring molten metal on your finger. And it's like, let's do an arm swatch of this one. Look at the gold green shift on that. Look at how, guys, don't sleep on unearthly cosmetics in general, okay? They, quality wise, they're some of the best eyeshadows I've ever used. These are some of the most beautiful highlighters. And I'm gonna be honest, like, it's almost like I kind of forgot about a lot of these because I just, they just got buried in my collection and this is making me really wanna love up on them again. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of one. I'm gonna get rid of Twilight and keep the other three. So this is my set of liquid and cream highlighters. How many declutters have you guys seen these in where they've escaped declutter by like the skin of their teeth? So I can already see some that I'm going to get rid of in here, okay? Let's start with this one. This is the ColourPop Lunch Money Super Shock Highlighter. I know I'm alone in this, but the Super Shock Highlighter formula is just not my favorite. My skin is very dry and I feel like this has a tendency to drag a little bit on my skin. It's very pretty, it's very metallic, but when I'm looking for a cream highlighter, this just isn't my favorite formula, so this one can go. I think I can also finally let this one go, as sad as it kind of makes me, oddly, because it's very, very, very pretty. This is the Ofra Liquid Highlighter in Monroe. It's a beautiful golden shade, but when I'm looking for a gold highlighter, like a gold cream highlighter, I have other ones I like better, which brings me to, let's talk about these, okay? The Melt Sex Foils. These have escaped so many declutters at this point for good reason, but I need to use them more. I mean, they don't last forever. Do these have a date on them that they're supposed to? No, these don't necessarily have a date on them when you're supposed to use them by, but they're so beautiful. Okay, let's do a little bit of a test. So this shade is Stargazer. And as you can see, it is a liquid highlighter, but when you blend it out, it captures the light so beautifully. This one is definitely gold, as you can tell. Really, really, really lovely. And then, oh, I'm making a mess. <laughs> and then this shade is Afterglow. So this one could, I'm assuming, be a highlighter on a deeper skin tone. For me, this is more like a liquid blush, like a peachy pink blush. But look at the glow on those. Like, they're absolutely metallic, but there's no glitter. They are just perfect, and they blend so easily. These are a dream. These are absolutely staying with me in my collection. I've been debating on this. So this is the Flower Beauty Spotlight Highlighter, and this shade is opal. Th you know what, no, I'm gonna keep this. I used it this morning in preparation for this video because I was like, you know what, I should use this now if I'm already questioning. So this has, similar to Charlotte Tilbury, the puff ball at the top, but this is like, ugh, you might as well. This is a beautiful, beautiful metallic metallic highlighter and similar to these sex foils it blends very beautifully now i don't think the quality is as high as the melt product but this is a fantastic you know slightly more affordable or inexpensive version and look at the glow on that look at the incredible glow this is staying and this is the glossier halo scope and the shade that i have is quartz this is absolutely staying so this is a cream highlighter stick that I love. This one is more subtle, as you can tell, but it gives like a very natural glow. I like this for days when I'm wearing maybe less makeup. It's just beautiful. So I'm keeping four, getting rid of two. So these are my palettes, and I bet that some would argue that some of these are not necessarily highlighter palettes, but I'm counting this because let's, you know what, let's start with this. This is absolutely staying, by the way. This is, again, by Unearthly Cosmetics. This is the Resurgence collection they did with my friend Heather Austin, and I wish I could show you, yes, you see how this shifts from gold to pink? It is so beautiful. This I personally use as more of a like blush slash blush topper. It pulls pink and very vibrant gold on me. 
Whereas this shade is a pure, beautiful, beautiful highlighter that pure, pure, yeah, <laughs> that pulls, excuse me, like white gold with like a slight, slight, slight pink shift. These are beautiful. I love the quality. I absolutely love the packaging of this too. So this is absolutely staying. This I've talked about probably since the dawn of my channel 10 years ago. This is by Naked Cosmetics, and this is just their holographic highlighter collection. And these are just different shades of highlighter. You guys, as I'm talking about this, I'm realizing that I haven't probably used this in years. It's absolutely beautiful. It's gorgeous. We've got green, we've got, but the thing is, if I'm gonna wear a green highlighter, I want it to be metallic as hell, and this, doesn't have the glow anymore. Oh my gosh, you guys, I genuinely purchased this more than a decade ago. And I think I'm gonna let it go. Oh, why is that so depressing to me? This is like a memory thing, like a happy memory. I bought this at my very first eye mats that I ever went to, but this, this can go. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. So this is the Viva Shine by Kaja, okay? So we have three different highlighters here. And oh, if I can open it. So this one is a very kind of chunky glitter. This one looks like it has herpes. And this one is like deeply marbled and dark, guys. This is going. I didn't like this at all. Um, I just hadn't had a chance to declutter it before this. This is going. I think this was bad quality. It did not represent Kaja. Kaja usually has amazingly buttery shadows and highlighters. I do not feel like this lived up to their brand, so that's going to go. This is definitely, definitely staying. So this is the Ofra. I never know whether it's called Glow Up or All Glowed Up palette, but this is an amazing highlighter palette. And all these are magnetic, by the way, so you can take them out. This is like a heavy duty palette where the mirror stands up. I've brought this one on vacation with me plenty of times to use as a mirror, you know, when I'm in my hotel room. But the quality of all these is amazing and I use every color. Some of the deeper shades I use as uh, eyeshadows. This is like a one and done look for me. I love this palette so freaking much. And this shade, is that Star Island? I can't quite remember. Yes, yeah, Star Island is the one that has the biggest dip. And that is just one of my all time favorite highlighters. It's a very like gold white highlighter, very, very beautiful, but this is 100% staying. And this is where I'm really torn. I think I'm gonna let this go. I was saving this for sentimental purposes, but it can go. This shattered out a long time ago. This shattered out a long time ago. And this one, which is Champagne Pop, which I still adore, I have another one of, so you know what? My Jaclyn Hill and Becca, you know how that relationship ended. This can go. So this is the rest of my highlighter collection. These are kind of my one-offs. And you know, I do have one extra palette here, but these are a lot of my singles that might not be, you know, like for example, I have a ton of Kaleidos, so I put those all together. I have a bunch of Unearthly, I put those all together. These are on their own, but guys, I'm gonna have a hard time getting rid of any of these. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. Like, let's start with this one. First of all, this packaging, is some of my favorite. This is the Dose of Colors and Desi and Katie collection. This was Fuego. I still use this very often. Now, you're gonna notice a theme with a lot of these that these are like golden tones. That's because that's what looks best on my skin tone. And I know that you should buy makeup to, or I know that I, as a YouTuber, should probably buy makeup to utilize on all skin tones. But here's the thing, I'm not a makeup artist. I just love makeup. I love applying it on myself. I don't apply it on anybody else. I don't take paid jobs, anything like that. So I'm playing with makeup for myself. So that's why you see a lot of these same color schemes and why you see a lot of products that are just so used because I love my makeup collection. Am I gonna get rid of any of these? Yes, I am. Okay, you know what? 
do we want to start with the one I'm going to get rid of or do we want to go backward? You know, let's go backwards. Okay, let's go backwards. So let's start with these two Ofra. I'm not going to be getting rid of either of these. This is the Start Inspired. Yes, this is the Samantha March Start Inspired Highlighter. I love, again, this formula. And when I mix these two, I get the perfect rose gold color. This looks so amazing like on my skin tone. And it's just like, this is one that you can make blinding or have subtle, but I love the sheen to Ofra highlighters. I think they look natural yet not, if that makes any sense. I just love the way that they look. And that is the same reason I'm also not getting rid of this palette. So this is the Ofra Glow. This is the signature palette, I believe. And there are five different shades in here. Do I have these shades elsewhere? Absolutely. Do I still use this palette a lot? Absolutely. Like, I don't know if you could tell how big of a dip some of these shades have, but I've used this so often. And again, the quality is so good. And I love the opportunity for a palette so you can sample different colors and just really dip your feet in. So this is one that's definitely staying. My two Sigma highlighters. So the shades I have are Savannah and Golden Hour. And I've just decided I'm gonna let Golden Hour go because this is so beautiful. But you guys, this is an eyeshadow color for me. This is slightly too deep for me to wear as a highlighter personally. But look at that, just even in the pan. And I love how luxe and beautiful the pans are in general. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Golden Hour go. And that makes me kind of sad because I really, really love these. God, this is one, that's one that's going to be tough for me to let go, but I am going to keep Savannah for sure. And I'm keeping the rest of them. That's the only one I'm going to let go. But let's go ahead and walk through these. So this is what I was talking about. This is my Becca and Jaclyn Hill Champagne Pop version. This is when it first came out. Does it say Jaclyn Hill on the back? It does not. It just says Champagne Pop, but I know that this is the one that came out with that collection. You can tell this is my most used highlighter that I own. I still use this obsessively. There's a dip here, and if I touch my brush in like two or three more times, that dip is gonna be massive. So I still absolutely love this. We already talked about Desi and Katie. This is one that I'm always slightly on the fence about, but it's, you know what, no, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. It's so like, oh, I don't know. This is another one of those shades that's like, beautifully metallic but not overkill. This is the Nabla Skin Glazing in Privilege and it's again just that pretty gold but there is a slight rosiness to it at different angles. Really do love that. This, I feel like this is oddly polarizing and I, I just don't get it. This is my Anastasia Amrezi highlighter. I still think this is one of the most beautiful pieces of makeup that I own. I think the packaging is beautiful and feels very luxe. I think the highlighter itself is just so finely milled that you feel like you're pressing your hand on silk. And look at that glow. Like, look at that. I don't, I don't understand. Where, where should I swatch so you can really see? Like, it is just so beautifully metallic, but finely milled so it doesn't feel chunky. And it's just, it's perfection. And then this last one is interesting to me. So I have two melt highlighters that I kind of call blush lighters because neither of these is the shade of my skin tone. Like these are a little too deep for me to use as true highlighters. So we do have Genesis and then we do have, what is this Love Never, oh, True Love Never Dies from the recent Halloween Town collection. They are very different. I thought they were gonna be very similar, but this is definitely more gold. This is definitely more pink. These are both staying. I adore the quality of these. They're staying. So I'm getting rid of one. <laughs> All right, let's get started. I think I'm going to take this by brand. Also, you'll have to forgive me. I'm sorry about any shadows that you see here. I keep trying to adjust the light, but there is a bit of shadowing because the sun is a little insane today. But I'm going to start with what you guys probably all know is the biggest part of my collection is probably going to have to be broken up into two groups. We're going to start with Melt Cosmetics. And yes, I keep all the packages for everything.
oh my gosh, it is so hard to get these damn lids to stay open. But let's start with a few elephants in the room. Yes, I have not one, but two of this first palette. So I'm gonna show you the good one, the better one up close. This is the Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette. And as of the time I am filming this, this is my favorite palette of all time. Okay, this is my favorite color story of all time. I love, 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 love the grungy tones in here. I love the formula. I love everything about this palette. This palette can do no wrong in my eyes. So this is the reformulated palette, okay? This is the one that has this kind of cover. This is my original Gemini palette. So this color did fall out, I will say, but this color, look how much I've used. Look how much of a dent there is in everything because I have used the hell out of this palette to the moon and back. And I bought this one as like kind of as a backup, but also to see what the difference was between the two formulas. I don't regret it for a second, okay? I will be using both. It's not like I'm keeping this one pristine. You can already tell there's swatches taken out of it. They are both staying. This is my number one favorite palette as of time of filming. I love it. They're staying. Gemini 2 is one that I will admit, oh, oh my God. Oh, you guys. I have never seen mold on an eyeshadow before, ever in my life, and that is mold. Oh, oh my God, I'm like disgusted at myself. That is so gross. So damn, I really love that color. So do I take that color out and keep the rest of the palette? Like honestly, the rest of the colors look completely fine. I'm probably gonna take that out. Does it show you how long it's been since I've used this palette though? I still wanna keep this though. I wanna keep this palette, so I'm just gonna chop out that color. Ew, can I get real close to gross you guys out? Have you ever seen anything like that? I, I feel like I should be more embarrassed than I am, but like, I, I'm not. <laughs> That's just gross. Wow, have you guys had this happen with any palettes before, specifically any melt palettes? That's, that's kind of gross, but I mean, I, but I'm still keeping it. Okay, anyway, here's another elephant in the room. Okay, I have talked at length about this Vita palette. I love this palette. I love this color story. It makes me extraordinarily happy. It is very bright. It is cheerful. It is celebratory to me. Like literally, this looks like a party, right? This looks like a freaking party and the quality is all amazing. There's only two shimmers in the whole palette and the rest are matte which I love Melt's matte formula, so I don't mind. This is not my favorite formula in this palette the, as far as the sparkles go, but everything else is so beautiful. What's interesting is that this came out as kind of a set. Well, I mean, you bought them separately. So we had Vita and Muerte. And a lot of you might know that I eventually decluttered my Muerte palette. And the reason I decluttered it was because I wasn't using it as much as I wanted to, but the number one reason I sold it I needed money at the time. <laughs> I needed some money and the hype was very real and very vivid for this palette. So I did sell mine, you know, when it was kind of at its height of frenzy and everyone, this was everyone's like, you know, holy grail. But recently Melt had a Black Friday sale and the Muerte palette went back on sale for $25. And I've been very vocal about how I wanted this palette in my life again, but I just kept passing on it. And I'm so glad I was there to snag it this time because this palette is so beautiful and I am so happy to have it in my life again. Oh my God, I haven't even touched it yet. I just look at that. I'm so happy this is in my life again. And I'm not gonna lie, the collector in me is so happy to have it back with its fam. So guess what? These are all staying. Okay, these aren't all staying up, but we're gonna go through these. I'm gonna give you a spoiler alert. I believe I'm keeping all of these. There's only one in this whole realm that I'm even remotely considering getting rid of. But let's start with some obvious, the Melt Mary Jane. I've talked about this before. This palette really surprised me because I am not a cool tone lover, but the cool tones in this really spoke to me and the quality is so good. The shimmers really stand out for me in this palette. And I feel like people give Melt a lot of crap for their shimmer formula, and this is where I feel like it really shines. So this is one that I'm absolutely keeping my collection. 
I've also spoken a lot about smoke sessions. This is definitely saying like, this one keeps blowing me away. Every time I use it, I'm reminded about how it might be one of the best melt formula palettes that exists. And I feel like people sleep on this one because maybe it's because it's not one of their 10 pan palettes. It's only an eight pan, but the quality of every shade is so good. It is so on point. And I just, I absolutely love it. This is absolutely staying. The Rust Palette. Oh God, be still my heart. Here's another one that I feel like doesn't get enough love because of course it is browns, but like while these are neutral colors, I don't consider this to be a neutral palette because the browns are very heavily like deep leaning and like that, like that's, that's mustard yellow. So I don't know if that's necessarily completely neutral. Of course, it's more neutral leaning than like this with like blues and pinks and things. But at the same time, I just feel like this is elevated, smoky, sexy, neutral. This absolutely staying. This is the palette I've been questioning. This is the Electrip palette. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm probably gonna wind up keeping this because Melt is kind of the only brand that I really collect. And I love this color story, but it's not my favorite palette that they have. It is probably, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to be doing another ranking soon. It's definitely not my favorite melt palette in the world, but like the colors that are good are so good. It's just, mm, even as I'm staring at it, Strawberry Fields is such a perfectly beautiful red. Magic Mush is like, I mean, the sparkly lime green in my dream. Pseudo is, just, okay, you know what? Am I falling in love with it all over again? <laughs> It's beautiful and it's staying is basically the, the line that I'm looking for, okay? This is the most, you know, divisive melt palette of all time. I'm gonna say it, the 420 palette. This color story speaks to my grungy teenage soul like very few palettes do. And I know that a lot of people have trouble with the quality of this palette in particular. I do agree that this palette takes more patience. I don't think that it's impossible to work with by any means, but it does take more patience than say smoke sessions, which is very easy to work with. But if you can be patient with it, if you are in a place where you can spend time doing your makeup and you're not in like a five minute rush, the looks you can get with this palette are so freaking cool and grungy and deep and dark and deliciously dirty. They're all staying. <laughs> All right, here are re okay, here are my remaining four melt palettes. My newest one. This is the Halloween Town palette that came out with the Nightmare Before Christmas collection. I did not get the um Christmas Town palette. Maybe someday I will if it goes on sale, but that one was not as much of a necessity to, a necessity to me after I purchased this one. They did release this and didn't give any hint that there would be a second release and it was a very big surprise to everyone. So I'm a little bit bummed about that, I have to admit, but I love this color story. I thought that I would just be in love with these and maybe like this. I love the whole thing. It performs so, so well. Again, like Shriek and Ooze are such rad colors. I really, really love Mausoleum, which is a sparkly green blue. And you know, you know me, I love these two sparkly, like this has such like a slight green tinge to it that I love. This is absolutely saying, and the packaging is to die for. Only second <laughs> to these two. So these are from the Melt Beetlejuice collection, and these have a very special place in my heart because it's not often that I buy entire collections from a brand, like every single piece that they offer. And this was a big one, and it was probably the most expensive collection I have purchased to date. So we do have the recently deceased palette. This one is all like grungy greens and purples. I love it. I love it so much. I love the packaging. I love the imprints. I love the colors. Now I do feel like some colors, like I feel these two are very similar. I feel these two are very similar and like they could have not put all of them in the same palette, but I still love it. And this one is absolutely getting saved. And this palette was one of the palettes that I, I don't know if I've had a palette surprise me as much as this one, 
I bought this one so I could have the whole set. That was basically the reason. It didn't really appeal to me almost at all, but I was like, oh, I'm going to try it on camera. And if you go back and look at that video, I swooned over this palette. I love the look I came up with and I've used it so much. I don't know if you can tell how much of a dent there is in some of these colors. I've used this one more than this one. And I thought this was going to be like the record breaker of all of them. No, it was this one. It was the waiting room palette. This ranked very high in my yearly review that year of palettes that I tried. I just love it. Now, again, I do feel like some of the shades, I feel like these are quite similar. I do feel these are quite similar. Even these are like similar-ish, but I still absolutely love it. This is staying. And then the Amor y Mariposas collection. This palette, again, is one of those that I feel like really didn't get the love it deserved. And I think it's because it went against Melt's standard 10 pan palette. I think it threw people off. Now, if you know me, you know I don't usually love big palettes like this. I don't like palettes with 75 colors in them, but this one, the color story was just so beautiful to me. It spoke of nature. It spoke of butterflies. It just spoke of like earth. I know that sounds really cheesy, but it spoke of earth to me and I still really love it. And I actually kind of appreciate, I think these are about the size of like a US nickel. And I appreciate that because I'm not gonna go through an entire palette. Like I might go through tequila. Tequila is one of the best golds I've ever tried. But yeah, guess what guys? My whole melt collection, my whole melt collection is staying. All right, so here's my entire Kaleidos makeup collection. And I feel like I need to be honest with myself here, but it's gonna be very, very difficult. But let's start with these six over here. So these are all a bunch of their quads. Um, and I, I, can, I can tell you right now that I'm going to be keeping all of them. Oh my gosh, wait, the only one, uh, the only one I'm questioning is this one, okay? so. This is, let me double check, this is the cold brew quad. And I have not used this much, which I feel like is obvious, but no, it's so beautiful. Look how beautiful those colors, nope. Guess what, I'm keeping them. This is the one that I definitely preferred. This is Black Jasmine uh, in that collection, but I'm keeping all of these. I love the quality of these. And all of these to me, are each cohesive looks, which makes this a very easy decision for me, to be honest. So I'm going to be keeping all six of these Kaleidos quads. These are the three that I'm having issues with. So these were their Futurism collection, okay? And the three that we have, we have Futurism 7, Shashimi, uh, Sashimi City, excuse me. We have Futurism 3, Astro Pink, find that interesting that this one is called pink and not this one, but so it goes. And then we have Futurism 5, which is Electro Turquoise. I don't know if you can tell, I've never used any of these. When these were being discontinued, they asked if they could send me some. And I said, sure. I said, you know what? I would love to receive that. So I received them and I haven't used them, but they're so beautiful. You know what? Oh God. Okay. Okay, let's do this. Um, I'm going, I'm definitely gonna get rid of this one. This one is beautiful, but I know I have neutrals like this in enough colors that I absolutely love. I'm gonna let this go to a friend. This is difficult for me. This again is Sashimi City. Oh gosh, look at that. Look at that sparkle. But to be honest, if I haven't used it, I want this to be passed on to somebody else. These two are, are very difficult for me. Now this one, uh, which is pink, which one is called pink something, right? Astro pink. This one, I wouldn't normally keep. However, these two shades, I don't have anything like this in my collection. Okay, this is a black with a sparkle blue in it, which is beautiful and I want it. And same thing with this. This is a blue shifting purpley turquoise that goes very deep. And even this, like I know this one is beautiful and I need to use it more. Now, 
I don't know if I will use this whole thing like this silver. I don't use that kind of silver often, but I do want to give this at least a shot. And is that not some of the most beautiful packaging you've ever seen? Ugh, that's staying. And I'm definitely going to keep this. I need to actually use it. Okay, this is Electro Turquoise. And I love this color story with everything that is in me. Everything that is in me screams for this color story. These are beautiful. I wish they were still available. I've heard so many amazing things about them and I've had them for so long. I need to just use them. So I'm going to let this one go. Oh, I forgot to introduce. This is my basket that I use to put everything that I'm getting rid of. I can't believe I forgot this Kaleidos palette. This is 100% staying. This is the Flower Punk palette, and it is also one of my dream color stories. I thought that I would only love the grungy half, which I do. I love the whole story together. This, again, is so earthy to me in an interesting way. It's just a unique color story, and I feel like those are so hard to come by nowadays, and it's so cool, right? So you've got these like pastel pops, of like really saturated pastel colors and then these grungy earthy like rooted in like grass and trees and like oh my god no this is staying and also i love this packaging how the mirror is magnetic and it's so beautiful this is staying wow i swear i'm not dr on drugs here okay we also have the club nebula palette which i got lost in my pa uh, like my pile behind me this is absolutely staying because, again, we have a unique color story. Look at these amazing colors all together. I will admit that I don't use this palette as much as some of my other palettes, but that does not diminish how amazing I think it is. I know this is a lot of people's favorite palette of all time. So if you have this palette, tell me, is this your all-time favorite palette? I love how deep and dark these colors go, and I use these pretty often. Um, I think it's, and also Firefly. I don't know if you can tell how big of a dip I have into Firefly and even grab it. I've used this palette a decent amount, but certain colors, like for example, Rock Hopper is not my favorite to use like kind of muted color like that. But like, what do you think of this palette? I absolutely love it. Um, I also, I don't love how thick it is, but that's just like, you know, picky, but look how beautiful that is in general. This is staying, come on. So this is my entire Urban Decay collection, which kind of also surprises me because I used to have a much bigger collection. I've decluttered a bunch over the years, but that doesn't diminish how I feel about a lot of these. So I've talked about this ad nauseum. This is the OG Naked palette. This is very old. It shouldn't be used anymore. And yet I do. I use this all the time. You can tell this is one of probably my most loved palettes that I own. I have used like, I mean, I'm, I'm at pan here. I'm definitely at pan there and I'm really at pan there. I'm almost at pan here on Hustle. Just, I love this palette. I wish that they had kept this the same. I really do. I'm glad they changed the packaging because I hate crushed velvet, but everything else about it is perfection to me. This is staying. I have talked so much over the years about the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette. Every time this is on sale, I try to let you all know because I feel like everyone needs this palette. It's so beautiful. And to this day, every time I pick it up, I feel beautiful. The colors blend very easily together. This is a very beginner friendly palette. So if you have a friend or a family member you're looking for a gift for, I highly recommend this palette. But I will say it is almost like not always, but it is very often on sale for 50% off. So I would highly suggest waiting for a 50% off sale and buy two of them and give them away as gifts because this is a fantastic palette. It's not going anywhere. This one is the newest addition to my collection. So this is the Naked Metal Mania. Yeah, the Naked Metal Mania palette. This one surprised the hell out of me. So Urban Decay did send this to me, okay? And when I got it, I, was look I looked at it and I went, meh, there's nothing special about this palette. And then I actually used it 
and I was blown away. This is a palette I encourage you. If you are in Sephora, if you are in Ulta and you see this palette, swatch it. It's going to blow your mind because this is the old school Urban Decay quality we know and love. And these metallics, these two metallics, I'm trying not to swatch everything. They are so incredibly liquid metallic looking. I just, I can't get over how metallic these are and nobody talks about this again. So this palette, again, I highly encourage you to try it yourself. This one is going nowhere. I love this palette. So this is one I'm not 100% sure on. So this is the Mucho Happy. This came out with the Smiley collection. It's beautiful. It is great quality, but you know what? I have this palette. I have the colors in this palette and it's so pretty. That blue is swaying me so hard, but I'm going to let this one go. I'm going to let this one go to a friend because I do think it's a great palette, but I just feel like I have these colors and formulas. I might like a little bit better, so I'm going to let this one go, but this one is staying. So this was another one that really surprised me. This is the Naked Sin, the Mini Sin, and these colors are so beautiful. I don't know if you can tell. I have like dips in almost every single shade because this is such a cohesive color story for me that this is like a great travel palette or, you know, just a, a wedding palette. This is so beautiful. And it does go, you know, decently deep, mid-tone to deep and very light. And the sh three shimmers are all great quality. Boring is one of the best shades ever. I love that it's called Boring but it absolutely is and is not at the same time this is staying so i am keeping these four and getting rid of one These are my Nomad palettes, some of them. I have another set coming here. This one is going to be tough for me, but let's let's go right off the bat. I am going to let this one go. So this one is the Paradise Islands palette, and I really, really, really do love it, but I don't know if you can tell. Um, I chose to let my, um, I'm, I'm going to call them my nieces. They are the daughters of my friend. I chose them to, you know, let them play with this palette, and they are toddlers, and they they uh, dug into it. So I don't know if you can see, but um, I don't believe this <laughs> is one that like I could sit here and I could repress every color, literally every color, but I think I'm just going to let this one go. Maybe one of my friends feels like putting a little more energy into it, but as much as I love the color story, I'm going to let that one go. This is one I'm questioning for myself because I loved this. This is the Monteverde Cloud Forest palette. Oh God, it's so, you know what? I'm going to keep this because I don't have a lot of like neon colors and the neons in here are so vibrant. I love Green Mountain too though. Green Mountain is this beautiful shimmery green that you can tell I've used a lot of. Because of the vibrancy of this one, I'm going to keep this because I don't think that I have a lot of those in my collection. So even though I don't use this often, this is one I will keep. This is is ghost town and you can pry that out of my cold dead hands this is such a stunning palette probably one of the best if not the best nomad has ever 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 done um the cool tones are beautiful the greens are beautiful i love these shades over here but even these coppers and browns are so rich and luxe like this feels like a luxe palette but i love the theming i love the imprints i love everything about this this is my personal favorite nomad palette Oh God, you can see my reflection on my 18 shins. Thank you. <laughs> but let's move on to this baby. So this is unique in that it opens up with two sides. So let's look at each side. This is the Verona Love. Is it Verona Love? What is the actual name? This is the, oh my gosh, Verona Italy palette. This is the Verona Amore Eterno palette. There's there are a more, oh my gosh, guys, it's the Verona palette. Great. So we've got this pink side and then we've got this other, hmm. you know what? This is so beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and let this one go too, because I feel like, again, this is one of those cases where I have not used this enough. And I think friends of mine would love to get some use. Oh, I love this packaging so much though, but I'm going to go ahead and let this go. So, oh my God, I'm letting 50% of these go, go me. Oh, 
All right, so we have three more palettes. We've got the Okavango Safari. We've got Hudson Valley. We have Royal Europe. So I will tell you right now, the Okavango Safari is staying, staying, staying. This is what I want to see in a neutral palette. Yes, I want to see browns, but I also want to see those earthy greens. I want to see the golds of nature. This color is such a cool silver when it's mixed together. I just love this, this like grungy kind of like, I don't know, green, brown, yellow. Amazing. This is one of my top three of all time Nomad palettes. I love this one. This is staying for sure. This is also 100% staying. Royal Europe, again, highly underrated. Look at the shift. Look at the shift in these colors. You see how like green this one looks right now? And then you switch to a different tone. Let me see if I can maybe show you in a mirror. Like, let me see. Yeah, look at the shiftiness in the color, especially this bottom middle. See how vibrant purple it is, but it's also blue. And then this has got that pink and that gold green. Like they are so shifty. This palette is so good. It is so good. Oh my God. Do I need to even say more? This is staying. This one, Hudson Valley. What do I think? I think, oh, I think I can let this go. I think this would get more love from one of my other friends or family. It really is beautiful. The quality is amazing. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. But I just don't use it as much, like as far as like a fall color story, there are other ones that I enjoy more. So I'm gonna let this one go and I'm keeping these two. This is my collection of Shroud Cosmetics palettes. These are all staying. I will tell you right now, these are all, all staying. We have Moonfall, we have Hello Bean, and we have It's Freaking Bats. I adore these color stories so much. So these two were in collaboration with my friend Betty Jean, who is Batty Bean. Uh, at this time she was Butte Bean, but now she's a Batty Bean. And guys, like these color stories are so cool. Like when you have as much makeup as I do, you really need a color story to speak to you. And these spoke to me. I'm trying to find a way to like balance them so you can see them all. Let's try that, huh? <laughs> but they are just so beautiful and spooky and grungy. I, I love them. And I can't pick a favorite between the two. I genuinely can't pick a favorite because they're so good. I love how this palette, the Hello Bean, is like pure Halloween, pure Halloween goodness with like the green, the like Beetlejuice green and the oranges and everything like that. But this palette is like low key, one of like the spookiest palettes I have in the best way. These are both staying. And then Moonfall is just made of these gorgeous multi chromes and duo chromes and like all of that yumminess. Like you can see some of the shift in the mirror here. Like, oh God, it's just so beautiful. And these colors are just so like, vibrant and well-made. Like, look at Artifact. Look at that color. Look at the shiftiness. I love it. These are some of my favorite palettes in my collection. These are all staying. These are my Unearthly Cosmetics palettes, and I will let you know these are also all staying, mainly because these two, I have only just recently gotten them and I really need time to play with them. Now I will say, okay, let's start, let's go from right to left. Don't Be Jelly, this is the first palette I got for them, and I got this when I was in Charleston. This is what made me fall absolutely in love with this brand. It is such a gorgeous color story, and these colors are so stunning. I wish I could show you truly. Let's let's do a swatch. This is my favorite color. Okay, this is Hydro Space. Let's hold on a minute. Let me really show you what this can do. It is so beautifully shifty from green to blue to pink to gold. This is one of the most beautiful colors I even have in my collection. It's such a beautiful palette. It's such a gorgeous color story. This really does make me think of sea life and I love it. This is, I mean, it's absolutely staying. Sorceress Smoke shocked the hell out of me because I thought this was going to be a boring neutral palette. No, 
This is grunge neutrals at its finest, okay? But grunge neutrals with a twist too, because you've got shades like Nightshade that definitely have that shiftiness to them again. And it's so beautiful. I love the look I created with this on camera, but I've been using this palette a lot, like a lot more than I thought I would. Okay, one more, Transfix. <laughs> they are just such pretty shifty colors. I love this. Fall Magic. This is the only one. I love this palette. I love this color story and I love the look I created with it, but I want to use this a few more times to see. It has nothing to do with quality. The quality is perfect. But to see if this is a color story I'll really get use out of in my collection or if I feel like this could go to somebody else because if I'm being honest with myself, pinks like this and purple, like that kind of color story, and even this, not completely my vibe. I really gravitate towards these grungier tones. I love this like leaves color and these colors are beautiful, but I just want to make sure that palettes in my collection are going to get love. So this is the only one that I'm sort of a little bit on the fence with, but again, nothing to do with the quality. So if this color story is one that appeals to you, snag this now. <laughs> You guys, I forgot two other Rogue palettes. So we have the Nomad Air. This is one of their newer palettes. I am keeping this, absolutely keeping this. This seems like such a sleeper, I'm very well aware, but this is a palette that I go to when I want an easy look because it's all right here. You've got your transition color, you've got your deep colors up here, you've got three different shimmers. This palette just makes things easy. And I, under, I understand, I know that this will look boring to a lot of you. This is such an easy palette for me. So this is staying and this is absolutely staying. This is from Unearthly. This is the collab they did with my good friend Heather Austin. This is the Resurgence palette and I love it. Look at that. Look at the color story. Like I love that you have these vibrant jewel tone colors in here like beetle jewel tones and then the red and then just I love all these colors. I love how shifty they are. The quality is absolutely unearthly quality. This is absolutely staying. Look at this packaging. Look at that. Look at the packaging. No, this is, this is going nowhere. Don't even ask. So this is my entire ColourPop collection. I'll admit, I thought that I had more than this. I'm a little surprised that I don't, um, but I can tell you right now, this one is gonna go. So this is the Bare Necessities palette and it's beautiful, but here's the thing. I did receive this in PR and I'm very thankful to have received it, but I don't love these like huge palettes and 30 colors. Like this is great if you're a working makeup artist, here's your bridal palette. Somebody in my like fringe circle is going to love, 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 love this, but I don't, I don't need it. It's good quality. I just don't need it. So that's going to go. Uh, there's a few of these I'm struggling with. So this one, this is the Kathleen Light So Jaded palette. Guys, I'm finally going to let it go. I'm finally going to let it go. This has survived so many declutters at this point because I love the colors, but I don't like big palettes like this. And I, I just, I don't know. I don't pick it up. I really don't. And the reasons that I was keeping this, I'll be honest, a lot of it was for these two colors because once I gave up my Muerte palette, I didn't have a dark blue and guess what? I have it back and I prefer that quality. So, wow, wow, wow. This is like the end of an era if I'm letting that go. That's kind of incredible for me. So this is one that's absolutely staying. This is the Raw Beauty Christie at Forest Sight palette. This is my favorite palette ColourPop has ever done. Okay, the quality is bar none the best quality they've ever come out with, ever, ever, ever. And I love this color story. This is going to stay 100%, as is this. Like, I feel like this is kind of another sleeper hit. This is the Wild Child palette, if I can get it to focus. There we go. So this, again, is neutrals but elevated because I feel like this is dark and sexy, especially like that pressed glitter in the center, but it doesn't act so much like a pressed glitter. Good Lord, I'm sorry if you can hear my cats playing. They are chasing each other and wrestling, but I really love this one. I've taken this on a couple trips with me now as my only neutral palette, and I've been very happy with that decision. So that's gonna stay. Oh, the child palette. What do I do with the child palette? So I am gonna let this go. 
that's what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to let it go. It's a good quality palette. It is, but I don't pick it up enough and I think somebody can get better use. So wow, 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 wow. I'm keeping two, getting rid of three. Guys, already this declutter is, I'm getting rid of way more than I thought I was going to. I thought I was going to get rid of like nothing or maybe like one palette, two palettes. I've gotten rid of a bunch so far and we're still going. You guys, this is my glam light collection and these are all going to stay, right? Right? I, wait a minute, because the thing is, okay, wait, let, let's start here. Hold on a minute, wait. Do I have everything that I need from this palette in these two? No, I don't, because you know what? I don't have Dreams and Dreams is one of my favorite colors in the Michaela pal palette. Now I don't like big palettes. I don't, but I am going to keep this one because I do feel like I've gotten some great looks off this and I do love the shiftiness. I think the quality is beautiful and I'm keeping these two also. So these are from the Scooby-Doo collection and I love this, this quality is some of the better quality for an affordable brand that I've ever tried. They're both so beautiful. I'm keeping them like these two. They're not similar. No, this is lime green. This is more of a mossy green. Okay, just making sure, just making sure. I'm going to keep all these, but it is interesting how similar. Like, how about, let me check these two colors just because I'm very curious. Very, very, very similar. Wow, okay. That was a color too that I was like super interested in. Huh, and like, let's see like this blue here and this blue here. They're similar-ish. Wow. Okay. I mean, I probably could get rid of this and just keep these two because I like the quality better. But I'm going to keep all three, though, because I really do enjoy these. They make me happy. And you know what? Isn't that what makeup's all about? So we have Natasha Denona. I currently have five palettes from Natasha Denona. Oh, this is, this is going to be an interesting one because there's one that I am really, really debating. Okay, so I am absolutely keeping this. This is my very first Natasha Denona palette. This is the Sunset palette. Now this was gone from the site, but recently popped back up on the Natasha Denona website during Black Friday for like 40% off. I still love this palette. You can probably tell I've gotten a lot of use out of this palette. A lot of colors have dips in them. I think the quality is brilliant. I love this color story. It is so fiery. This is one of the very first palettes I really, really, really fell in love with. I paid full price for it and I am keeping it for sure. Now the gold palette is very much discontinued. So I do apologize for showing you this gorgeousness on camera when it's not one that you can get easily. But this is one that I paid full price for as well. I don't know why I'm saying that. I paid full price for all of my Natasha Denona palettes. Um, and I love this one. I love it. I don't use it as much as I need to. It makes me so happy. This palette took me so long to buy. I sat on the fence for so long about it. And I don't know why, because it's beautiful. And I only got it once they announced it was being discontinued. And look how, look how beautiful that packaging is. This is staying the bronze palette, God, I have talked so much about this palette. This again is one of those like neutrals, but elevated for me. The metallics are so metallic and shimmery and beautiful. I love it. This might be one of my favorite palettes of all time. This might be up there. This is probably in the top 10 because of how much I use it and how much I just think it's stunning. The dips in the colors that I have dips in, whoo, they are like deep. And this color silk is one of my favorite metallics ever. Like that is staying. This is the mini nude, correct? I always get this confused whether it's mini nude or mini glam. This is mini nude. This is 100% staying. I have used this palette on vacations more than any other palette, period, because this creates a whole look for me. You can see probably how much of a dip there is in this color. I'm about to hit pan. I'm about to hit pan here and here. I love this palette. I probably use this the most of any palette in my collection. Can I say that? I think that's true. No, this is absolutely staying. I love it. Oh, 
the Yucca palette. So this palette, I waffled back and forth on for so long. I was like, do I need it? Do I need it? Do I want it? Oh my God, what am I going to do? And then I bought it. And guys, I've used it a bunch of times and the quality is brilliant. It's so good, but, but I think I've decided to let this one go. And that's very difficult for me. This is one that, you know, and several of these, by the way, I'm going to be selling rather than just giving away to friends and family. This is one I'm definitely going to be selling because this is quite an expensive palette. And there's a lot that I haven't used yet in here. Like I've swatched everything, but I haven't used this as much as it deserves. I haven't even taken the plastic off the mirror. I'm going to let this one go. And I love this packaging so much. So like, it's almost like I want to put it away before I think about it too much, but this is going to go. I can't believe I'm letting rid, letting go of a Natasha Denona. So I only have three palettes by Odin's Eye, and these are all collaborations with my friends, Angie and Yelka Nikvist. I don't know why I always feel the need to say Angie and Yelka Nikvist, but here we are. I am keeping all three of these. I love all three of these palettes. If you were to ask me to choose my favorite, I'm going to guess that it's probably the original Hella palette. Um, I love this, like this triangle right here is a grunge dream. Like it is earthy, it is beautiful. It is, you know, deep and dark down here. So you've got the underworld, but then you've got the forest. Like, it is so beautiful. But when you look at all three of them, don't they make your heart pitter-patter? Or is that just me? <laughs> I love Trick or Treat. That is, you know, a good Halloween and can uh, like Halloween theme to me. Whereas Little Ghost to me is more candy and just brightness and life. And I love all three. I absolutely love all three. These are all 100% staying. I do use all of these. These are amazing, they're staying. this is going to be where we're going to start getting into some more miscellaneous palettes that I don't have, you know, 50 things from each brand. Let's start with Sigma. So I only have two palettes by Sigma. We have Beauty and the Beast and we have Mini Ambiance. I am keeping both of these. Beauty and the Beast has really, really, really surprised me as far as a neutral palette. The quality is really, really good, but I love these pops that are kind of unexpected, like this dark navy blue and this really, really deep vibrant, like it doesn't, it sounds weird to call a brown vibrant, but it is. It's like this really reddish mahogany color, stunning. The shimmers, all perfect. Little Town is such a cool shimmer. Like, yeah, this is staying, like, look at that even. Just the little quality of detail, like this is absolutely staying. The mini ambiance was another one that kind of just surprised me. This is one that I've really been enjoying playing with. It is so lightweight, which I also find nice, and it folds down very, very thin. These mini palettes are great because instead of like, you know, just one or two colors, you get seven here and they create a cohesive color story. Really love this one. That's all I have from Sigma. This is all I have from Adept. This is the collab with Heather Austin. Do you guys see how well loved this palette is? Because I adore this palette. They are so shifty, like the colors are so incredibly shifty. Let's see, I mean, can I capture it even though it's really, really messy? I don't know if I can capture how shifty because I've made a disgusting mess of this palette, but I personally love seeing the palettes that are really well used because you know people love it. So this palette is so, Stunning. Look at it. Look at the shifty colors. Oh God, no, this is staying. This is absolutely, absolutely staying. It is so unique to my collection and forgive me if it's not zooming in as well. But anyway, yes. So this is the only palette that I have from Gourmand Girls and this is really new to my collection. This is the Haunted palette. I keep getting confused whether this was Haunted or Spooked. I love it. I sat on this for so long and I'm so glad I finally purchased it because this color story speaks to my very soul. I love it. And you wouldn't think that it would because there are several pinks in there, but next to these grungy tones, and I keep saying grungy, I'm aware, I love it. This is this reminds me in a way of like flower punk, how you have these earthy tones grounded by some bright pops of like pink and purple. 
absolutely adore it. This is staying for sure. I have two palettes from Fancy Cosmetica. This is the Warlock palette. And this surprised me because I was not prepared. You know what? Let's talk about both of these at the same time because they're both staying. We have Warlock and Warlock, excuse me, and Lost Library. Now, Lost Library, you can buy these as singles. These are the most shifty metallics, uh, duo chromes, multi chromes I've ever tried in my life. I'm trying to show you kind of the shift, and it's insane. They go from vibrant pinks and greens to golds. These are so beautiful and so changing, like that, I mean, don't even talk to me. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. Lost Library is staying. Warlock is also staying because I love this color story. I love it, I love it. I think it's so cool and unique, right? I think it's so unique. This is absolutely staying. This is the one I'm curious about though. This was yet another palette I sat on and it eventually was given to me by a friend. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Smoky Eyes Are Forever. The quality is so beautiful, but I'm gonna let it go. I'm going to let it go because I think it'll get more love somewhere else. The quality is so good though. Damn it, right? Do I want to keep it? Because to be honest, no, I'm not going to, right? Right? Because here's the thing. I'm not going to use this color ever, right? I'm not going to use this color ever. I love this center six colors so much though. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll put it in a use it or lose it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in a use it or lose it because I'm still undecided on that one. But I've gone back and forth on this one so many times. It probably should go, but for now it's staying. All right, we are getting down towards the end and I can see some we're getting rid of. So I'm keeping this. <laughs> this is my number one rainbow palette, okay? This is my number one rainbow. This is the Sugar Pill Pro palette. Um, it looks different now than it does, or it looks different then, excuse me, than it does now. But I love this. I love this palette. This is great quality. These are all mattes. The pan size is huge, you can tell. Love Plus, fun fact, I use this on my roots when they're really bad and I don't have time to dye them. Okay, so this is staying. This is such old packaging. I will tell you, let's see. Okay, this is absolutely staying. So this is a palette, again, that I decluttered and regretted it. So it came back in my life and it's not going anywhere. I even have the protective packaging on it still. This is Life's a Draft. This is the package, or the one that Ofra did with Samantha March, and I love it. I love it, I love it. It's so beautiful. It's such a good purple color story, a smoky purple moment. And I love this highlighter. I love this bronzer doesn't agree with me as much, but I love the highlighter. And I love this like shimmery blush topper. This is staying for sure. Don't know where we stopped here, but all of my Kaja is going to stay. We have Smolder Season, which has two shimmers and one matte. I love this. And then we've got Velvet Dream, which is very, these are very difficult to open. I would imagine if you had motor issues or fine motor skill issues, that this would be a problem, but these are three mattes that is staying. And we also have the Viva Shine Trio. So I do not love this one. I don't know if it's easy to tell, but it's a very chunky glitter. I've used it and it's okay, but I don't love it. But these two are very smooth metallics. We've got a much lighter champagne color and a deeper gold. I, mm, you know what? I I think I can let this one go, actually. I, now that I'm talking about it, I think I can let that go. I like it, but it can go. Um, yeah, and I'm also gonna let this one go. So this is my Pro Palette from Ofra, and I love it, and it's amazing quality, but I have all of these elsewhere. So I have, this one is not Star Island, what's it called, All of the Lights. I have a full palette of this, and the rest of these I just don't use enough. Hmm, wow, it's really beautiful. This is also a heavy palette, like heavy weight. So that's gonna go. I will say this is not going anywhere. This is by Give Me Glow Cosmetics. This is their Juicy Olive. And whoop, just making sure I'm still recording voice. This is the Juicy Olive palette. You know I love grungy greens the best. This is absolutely staying. And this, oh my gosh, um, you know what? Mm, 
I got to find a way to save this one color. This is a uh, Mac colors. These are all my old Mac colors, you guys. And I haven't used Mac in a very long time. So here's the thing. This is an empty palette. I'm going to find a way to keep this color out because this color from um, JD Glow is stunning. Look at the shift on it. And it's so metallic. But the rest of this, the rest of this can all go. I think somebody will eventually get use out of this. These are great quality. And I keep holding on to this for the single purpose of like pulling out a few shadows. I haven't pulled out this palette in years, actual years this can go. Oh my gosh, look at me. Oh, heavy. And guys, here we are. This is the last of it. This is the last of my palettes. Let's talk about this one. Um, on camera, I absolutely hated this. I've literally only been hanging on to it just so I can declutter it in this video, okay? This is the Lottie London Love Sucks palette. This palette sucks. It really, really does. I gave this to my nieces to play with as play makeup, and they didn't like it, if that tells you something. This is absolutely going away one of the worst palettes I've ever tried, actually. Okay, so this palette, I've talked about this in the past. I'm not using this, but I am keeping this for nostalgic purposes. This is the Kat Von D Divine palette. I am from Baltimore. I love Divine, love, love, love Divine. Love John Waters so much. So this palette just has a lot of like nostalgic value for me. The colors are Baltimore Waters for John Waters, Pink Flamingos, Female Trouble, Hairspray, I adore this palette. Again, I don't even use it, but I am keeping it for sentimental purposes and that packaging. Okay. This palette, I've also talked about this kind of recently as far as discontinued palettes. This is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Foil Finger Paints. And these are so incredibly metallic. You know what? Let's do a little touch. These are very smooth and very, very creamy but like incredibly wet looking foil finger paints. Like I was shocked with this. They are so lovely. This, I can't believe it. I wish I could link you guys to this palette, but even when I look for it on like resale sites, it is nowhere to be found, which always shocks the heck out of me. It is now staining the heck out of my fingers, but we're so close to being done. The Elf Hot Jalapeno Mini Bite Size Palette. I love this little guy so much. He is such a great quality palette for such a low price, like $3, and the quality is so good. And to me, this is a cohesive color story because this has a tinge of green in it. And then you go deep into the greens. I love this. I think I'm going to actually let this one go. I keep letting this one, you know, go through a bunch of declutters, but I think this one is going to go. This is my It's Likely Makeup Ugly palette. And these are just, it's kind of just a rainbow palette, but I do have these colors in formulas I like better or in palettes that I like the, in, like the whole color story better because when it comes to a rainbow palette, I, I'm happy having just like my sugar pill if I need to dip into it. This can go though. This is beautiful. I enjoy it, but it can go. And this one I'm still playing with. So this is by Wicked Widow Cosmetics. This is Graveyard Smash. I've had a lot of fun with this. I only recently got this, I think in October, but I've been having a lot of fun playing with it. It's such a kind of muted color story, but a really, really cool one. So this is staying, but I am going to let two of these go. All right, guys, I'm really excited for this to be a big declutter. As always, I'm going to be using this random egg-shaped container. This is where my whole declutter will go. Also, one quick note, I am getting over a little bit of a cold, so I really will try not to be sniffly during this. So forgive me if I am, but let's get started. I think I want to start with liquid eyeshadows.
right, so these are my liquid eyeshadows. I do have these separated by brand. So we have About Face, we have Stila, we have Koki, Hack Magic, these two are ColourPop, and then one Natasha Denona. And I feel, oh gosh, see, I talked about how I wanted to get rid of some stuff, and then I'm not. So, okay, no, 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 we're gonna get rid of some stuff today. So I will say the About Face, these are all staying. So if you have not used these yet, these are the matte fluid eye paints, okay? And I have six of them. I bought these pretty much all at once. I love these to use as an eyeshadow base, okay? So I'm not gonna swatch them all. I am gonna swatch my absolute favorite one though. And yes, even for these, I keep them in their containers. So Vertigo Flowers is my absolute number one favorite. As you can see, it is a lime green and these are so amazing. Yes, you can use these obviously for um, just regular eyeshadow, but as an eyeshadow base, these make colors pop so much. And yes, it looks wet right now. I'm actually gonna leave this on my hand till I'm done <laughs> this right here so you can see how these dry down. Because if you don't have these yet, I highly suggest them. The prices are really reasonable. They go on sale often and they're absolutely amazing. Like, I, I can't believe it took me so long to try them. I tried them when they were on sale at Ulta for like, I think like $10 each or maybe it was even cheaper than that. But again, this is Vertigo Flowers. Look at that. Tell me that's not just like dreamy, but I also absolutely love the matte black, which is Art of Darkness. Excuse that it is not in focus, but Art of Darkness is just a fantastic matte black eye base. This is kind of like a must have, obviously the purple, the yellow, the blue, and then this brown is the only one I have that is not matte. This is one of the fractal eye paints. So this has a little bit of sparkle to it, which is really nice, but these are all gonna stay. Oh, I'm going to have to make some tough decisions here. I have a feeling I'm going to do a lot of swatching today, but we shall see. So let's move on to the Koki Crystal Fusion. And I have four of these. These are all very shimmery. And again, I like to use these as eye bases. Oh gosh, here's the thing. Okay, these two, they basically look exactly the same, right? They are so damn similar. So the colors we have, let's see, do these have names to them? Okay, so we have Polaris and we have Celeste. Okay, so Polaris is, is a little bit more like rose gold champagne and Celeste is a little lighter gold. They look so damn similar. Like I don't need both of these, right? And then if you compare it to this Stila one, you know what? We're not even gonna compare it to the Stila one. Hold on a minute. Guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break for a minute. This is going <laughs> off base. These two Stila, these are the Glitter and Glow, and I was obsessed with these. I'm gonna let these both go because I look and I think that they're both cracking. Like, let's see, I feel like that these are not good anymore. Oh, oh, wait, wait, what? Never mind, never mind, never mind. This is staying, oh my God. <gasps> look at it, look at it. Look at that shimmer. Oh my God, that's staying, but this definitely looks dried out, right? This definitely looks dried out. Okay, yep, this is completely dried out. So this color is smoldering satin. This is definitely gonna go. Okay, but let's go back to these. I think I'm gonna let both of these go. They're really, really pretty, but like I have champagne eyeshadows that don't need a base. You know, I just have champagne eyeshadows that don't need a base. So I think I'm gonna let like all three of these go. I'm gonna keep this one because, oh my God, look at that. Oh, those two together even, so sexy. Do I want to keep these? The quality is really nice. Let's do a swatch of this. I'm gonna have to wash my hands a billion times during this one, I think. The quality is nice, but you know what? That base specifically, very, very pretty, but it's not the opacity that I want. I'm gonna let that one go. And then this one, oh God, you know I'm a sucker for any green shades. This is a Kelly green, like kind of an emerald Kelly green. You know what, I'm, mm, I'm gonna let that go too. I'm gonna let that go too. These are nice. They're just not the quality I want them to be, if I'm being honest. I used, and that's my fault probably because I loved these when I first got them. I think they've just seen better days. But like, okay, you can see now the Vertigo Flowers Matte Fluid Eye Paint. It has gone matte and look at that. Why don't I use that more? Because it's getting like buried over here. So yeah, like I'm gonna let all those go, but let's check the rest of it. So these three, they're not similar, but they are similar. These are all from, we've got one from Natasha Denona and two from ColourPop. And guys, I've never once used these from ColourPop. These were given to me by a friend. I think Angie gave these to me. And they're so pretty. 
but I haven't gotten any use out of them. I haven't used these and I've had these for like a year. So you know what, it's time for those to go. But this one will be staying. These were very like in and out very quickly. These are the Chromium Liquid Eyeshadows by Natasha Denona. And the color shift on these, look at that. It goes from like gold to green to blue to pink. Like it's really, really, really beautiful. And I enjoyed the quality of this. So this is staying. And this is new to my collection. This is from Half Magic. And you know what? I'm glad I'm getting rid of the other champagne colors because I was super impressed with this one. This was an impulse buy at Ulta. I do not do impulse buys, but this one caught my heart. It's so reflective. And the glitter in it is so fine, you cannot feel it at all. It's just like, it's so reflective. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And this color is, what is it? It's actually called Chrome Addiction. I don't know if that's the color or if it's the, oh no, Little Beast or Lil Beast is the color. Oh, these swatches are just making me happy. Look at that Natasha Denona, the way it shifts. Okay, wow. I didn't do too bad to start. So, I mean, I'm getting rid of several. It, it's a good start, guys. Hold. All right, so these are all of my single eyeshadows and we have loose eyeshadows, we have super shock shadows. Let me start off the bat by telling you a few that I'm going to keep because I just know these. This is Sugar Pill Bulletproof, okay? And it is exactly what it looks like. It is a plain matte black, but it is my favorite matte black. And often if a palette does not have matte black in it, this is the single shadow I will reach for rather than opening a new palette. It is amazing. Look how, this is their original packaging, okay? So I've had this since Sugar Pill was created as a brand. This is staying for sure. Another Sugar Pill product that is absolutely staying is one of my favorite makeup products that I actually own. This is their Goldilocks single, I'm sorry, loose eyeshadow. And it is a stunning metallic gold. I own nothing this gold, nothing this perfect. It is just like, it's shimmery, it's sparkly. Like I wish you could really, really see the sparkles here, but it is so beautiful. This is one that I will keep until it is absolutely gone again in some OG, OG sugar pill packaging. Like, look at this, look at how, well, maybe if it was in focus, you could actually look at it, there we go. So this is just, again, the OG gold. I still think that none tops this, however, I can, abs I can absolutely get rid of some of these things and let's go over it right here. This I think has never been touched. This is a sugar pill, super shock shadow in Ritz, really beautiful, but it is a stunning bronze, but it has silver sparkle. I'm a gold girly. I'm a gold girly. My skin tone really kind of demands a lot of gold colors. So I think that this could just go to a better home and I am going to let it do so. But another one that I see that's like that is this. This was gifted to me by a friend. Guys, isn't this stunning looking? It's like this beautiful, beautiful ombre of like a bunch of different colors, but I've just never used it. I haven't used it. I don't use the Super Shocks a ton. This color is super natural. This is also going to go in that bin. And you know what? So is this one. So is this one. Again, very pretty, very pretty neutral bronzy gold. This is called You're the Prize. I've never used it. It's again, gorgeous, but like these, they have to be very, very special for me to want to use them since they are single shadows and I have to dig through my collection. So that one's gonna go to, oh, I see some here that are absolutely gonna be tough and I don't know what to do. <laughs> So these four at the top are from the Raw Beauty Christie collection. What do I do? I, mm, am I gonna let this one go? So this color is Olympic. I had saved all of these, but again, if it can go to somebody better, it should, you know? Um, 
Yeah, you know what? I'm going to let this one go because at this point I feel like it just looks like a light wash of sparkle and I don't very much do light washes anymore. God, that's beautiful. It's just like, I think that one can go. And what about, can this one go? I think I'm going to have to keep this one. This one, this one's definitely a bit more intense. This color is mycelium. Let's see. That, so, okay, that again is a light wash, but it's a gold light wash. So that's more up my alley. I am going to keep that. I am also going to keep these two. Uh, these are just some of the more, I guess, colorful ones. We've got the orange, which is campfire. And this one, like a moss, which is that green gold, which has my heart. These are both staying. But what about telepathy? I mean, I love this kind of color. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's see. Do you want it? Okay, that's going to stay. <laughs> that's going to stay. This is stunning. Wow, this is absolutely beautiful, right? Oh, I like that. Okay, that's staying. But what about oh, Pumpkin Spice by Sugar Pill? Guys, when this came out, I had nothing like this. But if I'm admitting it, now I have a ton like this. Wow, that is just so beautifully intense. Damn it, I think I'm going to keep it. I think I'm gonna keep it. I need to make more of an effort to use it though. But what about Penelope? <laughs> so this is another one of Sugar Pill's loose shadows. As you can see, it's really chunky, but it doesn't feel that way on the eye. And it's very, very metallic. Look at that. Oh my gosh, you ready? Let's see, let's see how this looks. You know what? I think I can let this go. I'm gonna let it go before I think too much about it. It's stunning. I just got it all over my backdrop. It's really beautiful, but I haven't used it in a very long time. Wow, okay, okay, I'm doing okay so far. Y'all, I'll be honest, I did not know that I had 12 melt gel liners. Oh my gosh, I did not realize I had this many. Oh my goodness. Um, wow, 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 wow. Okay, great. So uh, these, are, these are all staying. <laughs> you can see the full range here. So these are from Nightmare Before Christmas. These two are from the Amore Mariposas collection. These two are both Onyx. This is just the new one that came out with the Bailey Sarian collection. And then we've got three from Beetlejuice. This one is from Rust, and this is also from Bailey Sarian. This was just one that they had. I love their gel liners so much, so, so much. These all have a pretty decent chunk taken out of it. I think I'm shocked. This is the one I've used the most, which is uh, Burnish, is it? Yeah, Burnish is like this reddish brown. I've used so much of this. I really need to dip into some of these a little bit more. I've used a lot of this, surprisingly, um, but if you might be able to tell, this one that I love so much from Beetlejuice, it's got some cracks, it's starting to dry out, so I really need to use these. What's interesting is that the other one from that collection is so creamy, you can still tell. I've only used this like two or three times, but look how beautiful that is. I need to use that more. So I will say this is all staying, but one thing I also wanna say, so this is my Onyx gel liner. You can tell, very creamy, it's actually pretty old. This is the new one that came out with the Bailey Sarian collection. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's starting to separate. It looks like it's separating a little bit around the edges. I heard that some people have had dryness issues with this. I have not tested it because I want to wait to test that until this is gone. So just keep that in mind. But this one is beautiful and completely fine. These are, these are all staying. Now, do I want to keep the packaging for these or do I want to just... Oh God, it's so hard because I love the Bailey packaging and I absolutely love this Nightmare Before Christmas packaging. Oh gosh, you know, I think I can get rid, even though it's beautiful, of these because they are covered in red velvet on the inside and I hate the feeling of velvet. So I'm gonna get rid of the boxes, but keep all the product.
All right, these are all of my glitter gels. And I can tell you right now, some of these are going because I can smell them from here. I'll tell you what's not going. Anything from here over, this one over, these are all the Melt Glitter Gels and they are some of my favorite products that I own. So we do have the two recent ones that just came out with the new Bailey Sarian collection, but these other three came out with Mary Jane and I love, love, love them. We have Burnout, we have Hybrid, we have Pothead. So Pothead is pure silver. Burnout, I'm sorry, Hybrid, which is my absolute, absolute favorite is like a dirty, like, like steel gray, I don't know. I've used this one, it's probably about two thirds of the way gone. And then Burnout is just a gorgeous bronze. These are all staying. Um, this one, huh, so this is an Illamasqua Chrome Shadow, the only Illamasqua product I own actually. Let me see, I mean, it's, oh God. Tell me that doesn't look like molten metal. Okay, wow, wow, wow. You know what guys, these always help me to see neglected products. Look at the shine on that. Tell me that doesn't look wet, like actually wet. Okay. Okay. You're staying. These three body glitters. I don't know. One of these smells. Let's see. This one doesn't smell, but this is dried the hell out. You can see it just like flaked out. This is from Electra Cosmetics, I believe is the brand name. I'm going to put this away because it's so dirty. This I'm going to let go. Now this could be put on with a glitter glue, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay. This Okay, this is the one that smells. This is gonna go. This is the ColourPop Glitterly Obsessed. This is stinky. This one does not smell and it is still quite wet. So I'm going to keep it. This is, you can see it there. This is from Lemonhead. That's fantastic. So yeah, fewer staying, fewer going. So this is going to be a bit of a tough one for me. This is, this is all of my loose glitters and my glitter adhesives. And I'm getting rid of a lot of this because you guys, I don't wear glitter anymore very much. Like if I do, I'm wearing a glittery eyeshadow. I much prefer metallic as opposed to glitter at this point. Glitter is, I mean, it's in the, my title. It's in my like actual channel name. But the thing is like, I'm just not wearing it anymore. So I think that most of this is going to go. So here's ones that I am going to keep. This is by Graftobian. I'm actually gonna keep both of these yellow ones. So I don't even know Glamorous Chicks Cosmetics. So this is a yellow. This Graftobian one though is so beautiful because it's like a green yellow and it has its own base. So those are going to stay. Is anything else gonna stay? Yes, you know what, I'm gonna keep these. These are little glittery stars that you can adhere individually. So um, these are just really cool. And if I should need these, then that's great. What else? Uh, you know what, I've gotta keep this. I gotta keep this one. It's hard to see, but this, this guys, this is an oldie but a goodie. Who remembers this brand? We have Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics and this glitter is called Bronze. Still one of my favorites. It's gorgeous. I do use this. I'm, I'm gonna get rid of all of these. All of these I'm going to get rid of. Oh my God. And as far as glitter adhesives, you guys, I don't need six of them, okay? I am gonna keep this one because this is fairly new. Um, this shouldn't be this color, so that's gotta go. And you know what? I will also keep, oh, this is for, this is for lip and body. I'm gonna keep this one as well. This is um, by Eye Candy. These two I'm gonna keep and these I'm gonna get rid of. So you guys, I'm getting rid of the majority of my glitters here. So I don't wanna necessarily spill this out everywhere, but we're gonna go through this. This is all of my eyeliners that I currently have. Um, it's not a whole lot, to be honest, and I try to make it so I don't have 10 different, or 10 of the same liner except black, which I use black in almost every single look. So I'm fine having multiples of that. But um, I can tell you right now, these are all staying. These are from Kaleidos. 
These are their like really shifty pencil liners and they're some of my favorite makeup products in my entire collection. So all of these are gonna stay. This I'm gonna kind of do quickly and I'm gonna see how many I can get rid of in here. I'm just gonna do it, I'm gonna do it quickly. We do have like shadow sticks in here. We have glitter liners, we have a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, this is stuff that's definitely staying. As far as these, I feel like, oh, there's another one. I feel like I need to test these to see if they're dried out. Um, so let's do some swatching. Right, so not a huge declutter in this area, but like some of these, I'm sad, the Milk Makeup Star stamp, which was my favorite stamp in the whole collection, dried out. So that went in here. I'm, a, you know, this is still fine, the little plus sign, but I don't ever use that. The Moon stamp still stayed good, and the rest of these are just ones that I want to keep. So I got rid of a few. All right, my eyebrow stuff. So, oh my God, this is very difficult for me. So I have a backup of the brow glue, okay? This, I don't know if you can tell, this NYX brow glue is basically empty, but I keep using it because I feel bad. I feel bad, but like, guess what? I've got a brand new one. We're gonna get rid of this. I thought I had three of these, but now I'm only seeing two. But these are the Koki eye pencils or eyebrow pencils. I really like these. I really like these. The shade that I use most often is chocolate brown, and they have a spoolie on one end, you know, as most of these do, and then the pencil on the other. It's very creamy. Like, I don't hear a lot of people talking about these. I really, really enjoy them. So they are both gonna stay. Actually, I can just go ahead, put those right back in, the things that I know I'm going to keep. This is, oh yeah, this is just a NYX brow marker. This is absolutely staying. I have this one that I've been testing out from ColourPop that isn't bad. That's gonna stay. This one can go. This is from Billion Dollar Brows. I don't even remember getting this, so that's definitely gonna go. I have several brow gels. So these are just like some hardcore brow gels. I'm sorry, no, I lied. This one is hardcore. This is the Patrick Ta laminating gel. Ooh, I'm gonna let this one go. I'm gonna let this one go. I feel like this one holds onto my brows like a little too much for my taste. So that's gonna go. But this Sigma tint, tint and Tame, I just have it in clear. This does a nice job of combing things into place without being too hardcore. So that's gonna stay. This, I'm so sad that both of these are almost gone. We've got the uh, Merit Brow Gel and my absolute favorite, which is the Kosas. I need to get a new one of this. I need to, need to, need to, but these are both gonna stay until they're gone. I really enjoy them. Oh, guys, do I let this go? The Anastasia Brow Wiz, I'm going to, because I don't use it anymore. This used to be my holy grail. How many of you used to also use the not brow whiz, dip brow. How many of you used to use the dip brow pomade? This was like 2016 shit right here. And this I'm still going to keep. This is the Patrick Tom Major Brow Shaping Wax, and it's just a tinted wax that I really enjoy. So that's gonna stay. Uh, my little sharpener was also in there. And last but certainly not least, we have my mascaras. We have some shadow sticks. We have a freckle pen. I mean, these are both gonna stay. Let's be honest here. <laughs> I love these. As far as my mascaras, these two are definitely staying. These are my two favorites of all time. We have the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara that has been a favorite for many, many, many years. And then we have the Melt Supernatural Lash, which is also an absolute favorite. This is for when I want volume. This is for when I want really dark length. So I'm keeping both of these. This, I tried it out. This is just a little sample of an Ilia mascara and I did not like it. I feel like this flaked on me. I used it a bunch of times. That's gonna go. This is the Lottie Freckle Tint and I don't have anything like this. I wanna keep this to play with it more. I don't feel like it makes a huge difference, but I still wanna keep playing with it. So I'm going to. Also, this snuck in there. This is the Urban Decay Moon Dust Shadow in Urban, Cow Urban Cowboy, no, Space Cowboy, excuse me. And I mean, I feel like this is a cult classic for a reason. 
The shine on it is so beautiful. This is a very wet looking shadow. This is gonna stay and I need to use it more. I'm gonna let these three go. These are some, some of them brand new in the box. These are three ColourPop shadow sticks. I just don't use shadow sticks. They're a really great product. This is great quality, but I'm just not using them. Okay, you guys, we are going to get this done. I'm sorry if there's some harsh sunlight, but that's where we are today. And as always, this is the little bin. It's just like this little bowl that I'm gonna to use to put all of my declutter stuff in. I really hope I'm gonna get rid of some stuff. I'm really nervous I'm not gonna get rid of a lot, but you know what? It is what it is. So you guys, this is one of the things that I was talking about. Like when I have a full collection, it's hard for me to get rid of it. And these are all of the beautiful, beautiful BK Beauty lipsticks. These are such amazing quality. And I'll be honest, I don't think I'm going to get rid of any of them. But let me go ahead and show you a few of my favorites. This is a big one right here. So this color is Kindness. And she is a beautiful, beautiful, like brown pink. You're gonna see a lot of like brown pinks. That's what I get excited over. But I absolutely love this color in general. It's so pretty. Let me see actually, you know what? Is there one I can get rid of? It's hard because I really do love all these. This is oh, just a perfect pink. And this one is called Self Love. This is one that I didn't think I was gonna like. And I wound up absolutely loving. Okay, what about? Oh gosh, I almost want to get rid of one of these or something. What about passion? Let's see if I can get rid of passion. No, you know what guys, I'm keeping all of these. <laughs> these are very smooth and very creamy and just luxury. The, the weight of it feels really nice. We've got a magnetic closure. I love these and you know what? Like I said, no one's forcing me to get rid of anything. And oh my God, do you see? Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> oh my God, look, wait. That's what it did because there's magnets inside. It just went like that automatically. What, what right do you have being so beautiful? I just, I'm keeping all of them. Oh my God, they're repelling each other. So before I take these out of the boxes, these are my Kaleidos Lip Clays, the Cloud Lip Clay rather, and I love these. I really love these. I will take, you, take these out and show you some colors, but the reason why I'm keeping this for now is because I also have a full lip clay set here. And you guys, I have a full lip clay set here. So I wanna look real quick and see what duplicates I have because I love these tins that they have that you can display things in. Like, let me, let me show you one of these tins. So with these tins, I feel like they're very luxurious and just really pretty. And it makes also a really nice gift, but I like keeping them in these tins. I don't know if that seems, I don't know, silly to do, but this is how I like to keep them. So I'm gonna look real quick and see what duplicates I have. All right, you guys, so this is what I figured out. These four sets, I have a tin of them. And like I said, I wanna keep the tin. I like keeping them all in this one spot, but I do have this extra tin that I don't have singles of. So I can let, what is this? One, two, three, four, 16 singles go because I'm going to just keep these in their tin. So first, let's get those out of the way.
And now we have these beautiful five sets that I'm so happy to have. Again, I love these tins. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And let's see if I can, I mean, I don't know. Do we want to see some, uh, some swatches or what would you guys like to see? Let's swatch this one. So this kit, um, you know what? That's the thing. These kits don't all have names, but uh, I'm sorry. They don't have names printed on them, but let me show you some of these shades. Let's, let's show you this one just so you can see this specific formula too. So these formulas are very moussey, which I really enjoy. They're moussey and they kind of like blend out like a dream and they're very like, it's a unique formula, but they go on opaque and pretty. I didn't do that swatch as best as I could have. I spread that out quite a bit, but this is actually like one of my favorite kits. This one right here, like look how different all of these shades are just in this one kit. It makes me kind of extraordinarily happy. I like it when it's like out of the box like this. So this kit right here has these four colors. It's so beautiful. I'm not gonna swatch, sorry, but I'm not swatching 20 different lipsticks right now because I've got a lot to go. But yeah, these are just such a cool formula. They are moussey, but they're opaque. That's the thing. I feel like a lot of times when they are moussey, the colors are like not blended very well or they, they just blend out into nothing. So I love this formula. I'm so glad that I can keep these five and pass on 16. That's, I like, I'm happy with that. I'm pretty happy. So you guys, here's another case where I got all of the lipsticks and I'm going to keep all of them. But what I am going to do, I'm gonna show you all of these. So these are the Fantasy Cosmetica Lost Library lipsticks. And I think you'll all be very proud of me. I have just now decided to get rid of the packaging and I know that one's tough for me. Well, you know what? Mm, I wanna make sure. My big thing is I wanna see if, whoops, if they fit into my lipstick holder because as of right now, in the boxes they don't so let's see oh so they do fit now i mean they're very like snug in there but they do fit so yeah you know what we're getting rid of the boxes at least you guys similar to the bk beauty lipsticks these are like so classy like first of all look at how beautiful that gold metallic is and they do have magnetic closure and they're just beautiful. So I'm going to show you each shade as I put these away because I'm keeping them all. So first we have Secret, which is a beautiful, beautiful like matte red that is just, oh, it's just stunning. You know what? I'll store them upside down so I can read the labels. We do have Mystery, which is more of like a deep burgundy shade. And these also, I think I said it was matte. These look matte but they are incredibly, incredibly creamy. So this is one where the stickers on the bottom actually got messed up, unfortunately. So this is actually Overgrown, which is the green lipstick that I tried on in the video and wound up absolutely loving. Again, I can't enforce enough how creamy these are. And then this one is Forgotten, which is this teal blue, just so beautiful. And I don't know, again, I don't know how they are so creamy when they look so matte. We've got Lost, which is a stunning orange. These are just, mm, these are really beautiful. We've got Unearthed, which is even more orange. This is like straight up pumpkin. If you missed out on Pumpkin King from Melt, you might want to try this guy. He is just so creamy, and I don't know why my lipsticks have suddenly become gendered. We have Obscure, which is a really, really pretty pink, just classic, classic pink lip. We've got Hidden, which I love Hidden. Hidden has become one of my favorite shades. This is, guess what, a brownie pink nude. But these are my absolute favorite shades to wear with every single look. And then finally, Buried, which is a true, beautiful nude brown. Oh God, I love this color. So yes, I am keeping all of these, even if I got rid of the box. And look, I don't know if you can see, but it's like, they're not even all sitting in there the same way. Like these are raised much higher. Maybe if I, oh wow, that really got jammed in there. Oh no. See, this is so weird. Some of these are just like really, really like 
like hardcore staying in there and I really want these to like oh I don't know we're gonna try this for a while we're gonna try it I don't like how much the, some of these are like jammed in there but we're gonna try it okay so this is truly a case also of me getting in my own way because I haven't been using these as much because I haven't remembered that they existed because they're sealed up you know now I want to also see if these fit in here without boxes I seem to remember that they don't and that's why I kept them in a box yeah these are still they're very tough so you guys please let me know what you use what kind of lipstick holder you use because I'm going to continue to keep these in the boxes but we are going to go through these because I haven't used these much. So let me make sure that I'm going to. This color is called the big one. It is matte and it is just a pure, like good orange. Like why haven't I used this? Oh, I'm getting like mad at myself almost. That is so beautiful here. Mm, let's see this. This is called what's your sign. This is also matte. Yeah. You know what I see? Look, brown, pinky, nude, brown, pinky, nude. This gets me every time. This is absolutely going to stay. By the way, these are the Urban Decay Vice lipsticks. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. I know it says it right on the box. This color is one that I will definitely not get rid of. This is Liar, which is a cream lipstick. And again, brown pinky nude. I have so many, but it is my number one favorite lipstick shade to wear with anything is brown pinky nude. Um, and I really do like this one in particular this shade okay you know what this is called um alvera and this is a cream lipstick and it's like kind of a brick red you know what i think i can get rid of this this is very pretty but i think maybe somebody else will get a better use out of this so i think i can let at least this one go also when it comes to cream lipsticks i don't like red cream lipsticks um this one is art walk and this is matte um you know what? I can let this one go too. This is a pretty pink. It's pretty, but a matte pink. I have other ones that I definitely like better. So I can let these two go. These are the Urban Decay Vice Bond liquid lipsticks. I have three shades. And what you do is you shake these really hard and they go on your lips really glossy, but like a liquid lipstick, they stay all day. I think though, I can let this shade go. Let me just double check. Let me shake it to make sure that we get the correct color, but this shade is PDA. Oh, I got it on the paper. Yeah, you know what, this is like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's not quite brown, it's not quite pink, it's not quite coral. It's just a shade that I don't wear very often, that I wouldn't wear very often, so I'm gonna let this one go for sure. I know that's not much. Also, let me just make sure, please. I love, 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 love a brown lip. Look how messy I am but this is too light and caramel based i this makes my teeth look bad so you know what i'm going to let these two go from the collection this one is absolutely staying it is unbreakable and it is your classic blue based red this color is perfect it stays shiny it stays bold it stays beautiful i absolutely love it so i am keeping oh did i make a mess i'm keeping these four i'm letting these four go All right, this is a bit of a mishmash of stuff, but uh, I'm trying to think if I can let Ava go. Yeah, you know what, I'll let this one go for sure. This was a part of the Lottie London Vampire Diaries. It really is just like a clear lip oil, right? Is that what they called it? A lip tint, it's, so it's not clear at all. Ignore me, I'm sorry, but it. let me see if I can get this. Once this bubble goes to the top, the thing is that it looks like blood, but I feel like this didn't even really give me enough of a tint to make this worth it. Actually, this whole collection, unfortunately, was a miss for me. I tried to make it work. I really tried to love it, but the whole collection just did not do me well. There you go. You can start to see the blood run down. Ooh, spooky ooky. This is definitely going to go. I will say these three are, whoop, <laughs> these three are absolutely staying. These were the liquid lipsticks from the, or I'm sorry, the cream liquid lipsticks from the Sigma Beauty and the Beast collection. 
I love these. They feel so good on the lips. And I love that you can mix and match these to create different looks. That is staying. Also, this is never, ever going anywhere. This might be one of my favorite lip glosses right now. This is by Finding Ferdinand, and the color is Summer Abroad. Oh, I'm sorry, no, the color is Lemoncello. So this came out with the Summer Abroad collection that Khaki did with them. I love this. It looks very yellow in the tube, but on, it just gives a beautiful, warm sparkle. Absolutely adore this. I'm trying to decide if I want to keep all seven of these. So these are the Kaleidos glosses. And you know what? I can definitely get rid of a few of these. So these are absolutely beautiful. And these are my favorite, one of my favorite formulas of glosses. They are so creamy and hydrating and beautiful. But if I'm being honest, I don't really wear these. And these are the two sparkly ones. So the shades are Penthouse and Free Fall. They really are gorgeous. Oh, you know what? But what about this one that's like this is like a black silver sparkle. You know what? I'm just going to get rid of one. I'm just going to get rid of Penthouse, which is really beautiful. It's pink with gold sparkle, but I just really haven't worn it. I have worn the rest, and I really, really love them. I'm keeping all of those. These are the ColourPop lippy sticks that I have left. I used to have so many, and I can get rid of a few of these. So these two, I really haven't used. Um, the shades are At Twilight and Coyote Ugly, I haven't used these. So these can go to a new home. These are all gonna stay. So I do have two of my very favorite, which is Cookie, which guess what? It's a brown pink nude. So is Dream Date, so is Aquarius. These look basically exactly the same, but I love them. Uh, you know what, can this one go? Yeah, you know what, I can let this one go. This is Trust Me, which is a beautiful, beautiful matte red. But if I'm gonna wear matte red, I prefer a liquid lipstick. So that one can go, and Little Tings is a pretty pink. So you know what? I'm going to keep that one for sure. I do like that. I like the formula of these. Very comfortable. Now, these five came out with the Odin's Eye and Angelica Nikvist Halloween collection, and these are just really cool. So we do have two. I'm keeping all of these, by the way. You can see the colors right here, but we do have two matte liquid lipsticks. We have a glow gloss. I'll show you the glow gloss just because it's really like, it's just really, really cool. It is a clear gloss basically with, uh, with just like a tiny bit of a tint to it, but it's got this amazing sparkle in it. Look at that glowing. Oh, and again, this just adds kind of a warm touch, but not a ton of color. Really, really beautiful. And then these other two, you know what? Hmm. Let me just make sure about spectral. It's very pretty and it hurts me a little bit to break up the whole collection. But again, if I'm not using these, this is a gloss as well. It's a shine gloss. Yeah, you know what? I'm keeping it. <laughs> I'm keeping it. I really, these, this whole collection really, really is beautiful. I feel like Angie really outdid herself with this collection. And these like kind of swampy, grungy tones, very much up my alley. So I am getting rid of one, two, three, four, five and keeping the rest. All right, so here we have another kind of mishmash of lipsticks. And you guys, I definitely see some that I can get rid of in here, just a few at least. Um, it's gonna be difficult for me, but I can definitely get rid of them. Um, let's tell you the ones I'm not gonna get rid of. So for example, I have these two Merit Bullet lipsticks. Guys, I do have to say though, these are like, there's a lot in here that's sticky and I don't know why. I don't know if like a lip gloss exploded at some point in there, but that's kind of gross. So this shade is Slip. It is such a perfect brown. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like this is loose in the tube and everything, but it's so good that I'm absolutely keeping it. And this shade is 1990, which is also brown, but a much deeper color. These two are definitely, definitely staying. I really like these. Why don't I pick out some ones that can go? I think both of my Fenty Beauty, what are these called? These were like the Slip Shine, Slim Shiny Shiners lipsticks. So I have two, I have Makeout Break and I have Glaze. These are both brown pinky nudes, but to be honest, I just haven't used them. I haven't used them. So those two are going to go. 
I think I can also get rid of this. So this is the Wet n Wild Send Nudes. This is the liquid cat suit. This is very old at this point. It's a very pretty color, a very pretty brown pinky nude. But the thing is, I haven't used it and I don't uh, purchase Wet n Wild anymore. So this is quite old. That can definitely go. Gosh, what else can I get rid of? You know what? I have two of the same color, right? Are these both the same color? Yeah, these are both pink drink. I'm going to keep the one that's more full and get rid of this. These are both by Kaja. This color is so pretty. You can see the color straight through the tube, which I really appreciate. It is just beautiful pink, but it's got the ever loving, like tiniest hint of a gold sparkle. I love it. And this one is a little bit lighter. This color is milk tea, mm, my favorite drink, <laughs> but it's so good to layer over others. I really enjoy that. What else? You know what? Let me get rid of this one. So this is by Pixie and Chloe Morello. Do you see the shimmer in this? There's like gold. Maybe I'll just swatch it just in case, but I think I can get rid of this. Yeah, this is really pretty and very, very metallic and it's got sparkle in it. But this one actually does pull, unlike some others, this pulls a little tiny bit more gold yellow than I usually prefer, but it's so pretty. Oh gosh, but I haven't used it, you guys. I really haven't used it. So it's time to let it go. These are absolutely staying. These came out with the Nomad uh, Fete de Provence collection, and this was my favorite part of the collection. These glosses are so beautifully sparkly and shimmery. Oh God, I just love them. As for lipsticks, we do have two more here. So this is Charlotte Tilbury Super Cindy, right? Yes, yeah, Super Cindy, a fantastic, fantastic, just regular pink, but these are so creamy and the quality is so good. Do I want to keep this one? So I have to admit, I hate the shape of this. I hate like things that are weird shapes necessarily just for being weird shapes. I don't know. So this is a beautiful Sigma lipstick. The color is nice. It's a perfect like mauve rose um, color, but you know what? I'm going to get rid of this. Also, you have to twist it like 9 million times. I don't know. Just this one just didn't appeal to me that much. So I'm going to let that go. We also have two from the ColourPop and Raw Beauty Christie collection. These were the glosses in Wildflower and Glacier. See, these are sticky too. What the heck is happening? But I'm keeping these. The Dose of Colors, Desi and Katie. Uh, wait, was this Desi and Katie? No, this might have been I Love Sarah E. And this, do you see on top how it is sticky again? Ugh, so gross. So gross. I just need to use these more. You know what? I'll also get rid of this. This is the Luna by Luna lip gloss. It's a very pretty light pink. I think I got this in a boxy charm. That can also go. So I'm going to keep, am I going to keep all these? Yeah, I'm going to keep these. And I'm going to let these uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven go. I'm going to let these seven go. guys, this is such a weird mix, right? Like this is a freaking weird mix. There's gloss in here. There's lips, the bullet lipsticks. There's liquid lipsticks. There's just everything. And it's just like, I don't know. It's bothering me. I think I can get rid of a bunch of these. And you know what? Right now off the bat, I'm going to get finally get rid of these two. Um, so these MAC lipsticks are old. They are so old. And these were the last two I've kind of been holding on to for dear life. I stopped using MAC roughly 2018 when I decided to go cruelty free. So that means these lipsticks are at least five years old, but I'm going to guess probably closer to seven or eight. So we do have Viva Glam 5, which, <laughs> oh my gosh, like, you know what, guys, I lied. I'm going to keep this. Let me smell it. Yeah. You know what? Never mind. I'm going to let it go. This is a sparkly nude it's beautiful. You can tell it was one of my favorite nudes. And Whirl, I absolutely still love. It's a mauve pink. I don't really have a whole lot like this, but it's just time for these to go. It really, really is. Oh my gosh, that one's actually kind of hard to do. I'm not going to lie. I can also get rid of this. So this is a beautiful orangey red liquid lipstick by Pixi. The color is orange red. And 
it's gorgeous, but I have other liquid lipsticks in red that I prefer. And I usually go for a blue based red as opposed to an orange red. So that's going to go directly to the side. What else can I get rid of? Okay. You know what? I think I'm going to get rid of, oh my God, all of these. Do I want to get rid of Guys, am I going to get rid of all of these? I love these. They all look exactly the same. We do have Dose of Colors Cork. No, no, I need to keep this. This is just a really good brown that I love. But we do have Verona by Ofra. We have Ashton by Anastasia. And we have Cinnamon Bun by Too Faced. I'm going to let them all go because I haven't used them. I really haven't used them. Those can all go. As far as my four ColourPop bullet lipsticks that I have left, I can tell you right now this one is going to go. I ordered this by accident. This is Bloom to Bloom, and it's one of the velvet. Ooh, look at that. It just comes right out. Great. This is one of the velvet lipsticks, and I do not like those. That's not a formula I enjoy. But these three, let's see. Is this What's Your Sign? So What's Your Sign is my favorite ColourPop lipstick of all time. It's just a brown pinky nude but this came out with one of the Kathleen Lights collections and I absolutely adore it. We also have the lounge which is very very similar and we have this is with the Ariel collection right and it's very similar so these are three brown pinky nudes but guess what I'm keeping them all. This one is color not color pop Urban Decay Intensity. Gosh guys I know these all look the same but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep all of those. What else can I get rid of here? You know what? I can get rid of this. This is beautiful, but this was one of the Kat Von D. Like you can see how purple sparkly it is. This is gorgeous and unlike anything I have in my collection, but I haven't been using it. I haven't been using it. It's time for it to go. I can also get rid of this little tiny Ofra lipstick in Milan. That can go. I have three Urban Decay glosses. I am going to get rid of all of them, of all of them. So the shades we have are Name Drop, Runyon, and Cruisin. I love the formula of these, but these colors just, they just don't suit me. So those are all three gonna go. I have three Kat Von D mini liquid lipsticks left. So we do have Nosferatu, which is a deep red. I'm gonna let that go. We have Lolita and we have Ludwig, and I'm gonna keep none of them. I'm gonna keep none of them. They gotta go. Guys, it's, it's just time. It's time for me to purge, okay? The rest of this, am I gonna keep the rest of this? I think that I am. So I have from Unearthly Cosmetics, I have Juice, Aura, and what's this color? This is Kalina. And they're just these beautiful, beautiful liquid lips and glosses. I really enjoy these. We also have the gloss that came with the Heather Austin and Unearthly. Um, collab. Look at the beetles. Look at the beetle on the side. I love it. We have Sugar Pill Trinket, which is a stunning pink with gold glitter in it. We've got my favorite Melt Bullet Lipstick. Oh gosh, that one's falling out too. This is the old formula. So I want to get this eventually in the newer formula. This is Frisky. And this is the only MAC product that I'm keeping. Let's see, is there anything even left in this? Yes, there is. Okay, so this, let me make sure it doesn't smell. It does not smell, so we are good. These were called their Slim Shines, and I loved these. This is like a light pinky brown nude, <laughs> a lighter pinky brown nude. I really adore this. These three uh, glosses came out with the Ofra and Samantha March collection, and I use all of these often. So we have Millie, which is like a diamond sparkle white, very similar to this one actually, except this has more blue in it, and this has more gold. We have a uh, story, no, Peony, which is just a beautiful pink and my favorite gloss from them, which is Queen. I have so many backups of this because it's my favorite gloss like ever. It's this beautiful gold. You can probably see this one is almost empty. So it's almost time to break into a new one, but this is all staying and those are all going. All right, guys, these are the last of my lipsticks and lip glosses. We do still have lip balms and pencils to go, but 
I am going to keep a good amount of these. So these are the four lipsticks. You can see the colors on the front here that came with the Mel and Bailey Sarian collection. Very much keeping all of these. I can't decide. I know I should get rid of the packaging. I know I should. Let me see. Let me just make sure. Yeah, these don't fit in any of my holders, but I love this packaging and this collection. Uh, means a lot to me for a lot of reasons. So no, these are all staying. These, I did get both of the lipsticks from the Melt and Halloween Town collection. So the two shades that we have are Pumpkin King, which is the perfect burnt orange. I'm so sad this one sold out. I try not to talk about that one too much because I know that this was like the one that got away for a lot of people. Lock, Shock, and Barrel is a very deep, dark, dark, like brownish plum. It's absolutely beautiful. I do not wear this one as often, but I also don't have a whole lot in my collection like this. And I love the packaging. Now, I don't love these boxes because again, how I just talked about like, you know, I don't love things that are weird shapes for the sake of being weird shapes. It makes it difficult to store, but those are staying. These two, you know what? I think I can let both of these go surprisingly. These are my Fenty Beauty glosses and I really loved, so this is Fenty Glow. I used the hell out of that. You can see it's almost gone. This one is hot chocolate. I never really used it a whole lot, but for some reason it has survived so many declutters when it kind of shouldn't have. So I'm gonna let both of these go, which kind of surprises me about myself. These Sigma lip oils are absolutely staying. I have three different shades. Let's see if the colors are listed here. Yes, I have Tranquil, which is pink. Tint, which is my favorite. This one is like uh, pretty much like a brown mauve and then a clear, which is just called Hush. I love these lip oils. If you are a fan of lip oils and have not tried Sigma yet, I highly encourage you to try these. These are very hydrating. They have jojoba oil, sunflower seed oil, and vitamin E. I absolutely adore these. These are also two lip oils and I want to keep trying these. These are from Fantasy Cosmetica and the shades we have are Demon, which is black with like silver sparkle and Fiend, which is red. And again, these are lip oils, so they're not going to be completely pigmented and they felt really, really good on the skin. I don't know if this is my favorite formula of lip oil. I prefer the Sigma, but I do want to keep trying these, so I'm going to keep them. And I'm going to keep, these are the two red liquid lipsticks that I use the most. So this is Kat Von D and this was like before it was KVD. And this one was called Underage Red. I'm not sure what it's called now since that name has changed. And this one is by um, Natasha Denona and the color is Eva. They are very, very, very similar in that they are both blue based reds, which I really enjoy. So these are all staying and these two are gonna go. We found a stowaway lipstick. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hot Lips Collection. And this color is not my favorite name. It is JK Magic, but it is a perfect color. This color is just stunningly, I don't know, stunningly nude. And it's so creamy. This is one of my favorite lipsticks that I own. I absolutely adore the packaging. Where did the lid just go? Oh, it rolled away. <laughs> I adore the packaging. It feels very luxe, but I love the moons and the stars. And I even love the packaging here, how it slides in. It feels very luxe. So this is absolutely staying. And finally, you guys, we have my lip pencils and my lip balms. What I'm going to do, similar to how I did with my eye pencils, I'm going to go ahead and take the bin and I'm just gonna kind of sort through this real quick and see what I can put in here. I'm probably going to keep a lot of this if I'm being honest. Like, you know what, I'm, I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna keep, do I wanna keep all of these bombs? Yeah, cause this is a nice little scrub and we've got, you know, the Nomad Lip Salve, which is really beautiful. You know, I can get rid of this actually. I'll get rid of this one. This is a Sol de Janeiro. It's just like a tinted lip balm that can go. But in general, I'll go through these um, and, let me just sort through real fast. Wow, 
out, you guys, I actually let, let go a bunch of lip pencils and I'm kind of proud of that. But here's the thing. There are colors that are not represented in my collection. Like I need a deep brown and an orange specifically. So if you have ones that you recommend, please let me know. Leave your recommendations down below. But guys, that's the full collection. And that is my declutter series for 2023. I am so proud of how many things I was able to get rid of this time. I am pumped. And also, you know what else I'm pumped about? Filming this intro and outro when I haven't just been standing on my feet doing a declutter for three and a half hours, because damn, that's hard. That's why I actually still have energy right now. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed my declutters this year. I'm very, very, very proud of myself for how much I let go because I have a hard time letting go of makeup because it does hold a very happy place in my heart. It just brings me joy. So letting it go just sometimes feels like I'm letting some joy go. But if those items themselves are not bringing me joy anymore, they gotta be gone. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Comment down below if you haven't already. Subscribe, all those good things. You all can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Those are all Glitter Fallout as always and forever and ever and ever more, you all are super freaking rock stars. I love you so much with my whole heart and I'll see you in the next video.